the White House, President Eisenhower signs the proclamation that makes Alaska's entry into the Union official, nearly 92 years after Lincoln, Secretary of State, bought the territory from the Russian Tsar for $7 million. The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Barney Sports Chalet, supplying hunters with the best hand-selected gear since 1963. The exclusive home of Frontier Gear, built for the rugged Alaskan terrain. Your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Visit Barney's today at 906 West Northern Lights. Arbor Digital, the forefront of digital assets, cryptocurrencies, and wealth management. Providing a low-cost, research-based investment strategy for Alaskans looking to invest their hard-earned money. Visit arborcapital.io today to put your money to work. Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services. Helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Total Truck and Alaska Overlander, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and overlanding products, providing all-inclusive rental vehicles and trailers custom outfitted to explore the Alaskan backcountry with a unique and convenient traveling experience. Serrano's Mexican Grill, two locations, one on Tudor, one on Northern Lights. The Northern Lights location has their new tequila bar. Check it out. Also see their daily specials at serranosmexicangrill.com. The TreehouseAK.com, located at 341 Boniface Parkway, Alaska's own and grown cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. The Connoisseur Lounge, Alaska's premier locally owned and operated cannabis retailer, located in the heart of Palmer, Alaska. Their cultivated products include Snowcap Romance, Aurora Haze, Superglue, and much more. Find them at theconnoisseurlounge.net. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska, built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation, with exclusive products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce cards, and more. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. Marijuana has intoxicating effects that may be habit forming and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with consumption of marijuana. For the use of only by adults 21 and older, keep out of the reach of children, and marijuana should not be used by women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. The Bait Shack, located on Ship Creek upstream of the bridge. Can't miss the bright red shack. They are the go-to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. Tight lines and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Snow Pro AK, your snow and ice management company specializing in business and residential properties. They know what it takes to keep your property presentable and safe. Give them a call for a free estimate at 280-7098 or visit lawnproak.com. Double Shovel Cider Company, located off of Arctic and 58th handcrafted Alaskan-made colonial ciders. They also have a tap room downtown on the corner of 5th and E. Stop by today and taste an award-winning cider. He was studying it while he was, was snowboarding? I was like, why are you here? <laughs> you didn't want to miss out on it. I was like, why are you here? Dude, you, sh- like, sh- you should be at home. Like this is the most- He's like, nah. He's like, he was like, <laughs> he said to me, he was like, I didn't have any friends in, in med school, Chad, like, I was the dude who messed up the grading curve. Sm- oh. Like on test days, hung over, smelling like booze, and everyone hated me. Smell like, <laughs> smell like Hennessy? Yeah. <laughs> Hennessy, dude. That's some East Side shit. Dude, dude I, oh my God. I could, I've, never, I've never ever gotten into Hennessy. Oh, it's so gross. Like it makes me want to throw up every time I have to take a shot of it. And I say I have to take a shot of it. Because someone's like, Hennessy shots, and they hand you one, and you're like, I don't say no to any shot, because that's just like the rudest thing ever. Yeah. But I'm just like, oh. not Not once it's purchased. If it's yeah, like, yeah. hey, do you want like this, and I don't want it, I right. would definitely be like, no. No, no. Get that, me Jaeger. I that, don't want Fireball. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have Fireball over Hennessy. But that's what Absolutely. I... Absolutely. But, but you're right, like... If it's purchased and like, here's the round, and you're like, fuck, man. Yeah. Like, all right. Like, I'll choke this down. You so do the over the shoulder? 
<laughs> like we, uh, the Robins, that's the Robinson, bro. <laughs> that's known as the Robinson. <laughs> Just do the uh huh, uh huh. And you know, uh -huh. I, you know, I caught him. I caught him doing it because he didn't look behind him and he hit a dude. And the oh, guy was the like, "What the fuck, bro?" And I looked back and this dude's like, it's "Got a it Jager perfect dripping down his shit. about two ounces of alcohol <laughs> dripping down him." And I was like, "You shady motherfucker!" Oh, that's fucking funny. Damn, I didn't know that. Dude, drink oh, shots all nights but never gets drunk. Yeah, yeah, that was his move, forever. Wow. Yeah, he is beyond. That's pretty slick. to like get me hammered. Which is that dude still around? I don't. Yeah, last time I seen him was here. probably one of the funniest edible stories in my life. He spends a lot of time in Colombia too. Oh, is he Colombian? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Welcome to Alaska Wild Project episode ninety five. We got Chad Welcome in the close. house tonight. Welcome back. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks um, for coming in, Chad. <laughs> Getting close to the century mark, man. The hundo? Hundo. Yeah, five Getting more. Really close, yeah. It's going we have, who's going to be on the hundred? Uh, Jake Cooper. Jake. Do Bowser. we have him already lined up on the Um, I don't know if he's on actually the on the... Well, I, um, I thought there was like a weird discrepancy with like he has to travel. Doesn't he have to fly Yeah, we to had to like record it earlier or something. Something like that, yeah. Well, while we're on that topic, um, he's got a sick ass <clears throat> bear story, I guess, on Kodiak. Yeah, he'll be a really good. He'll be really yeah, I was hearing Jack saying that he has some super good footage. It was mm -hmm. on like a 10 and a half, 11 foot bear. Yeah, monster. With a trad bow? No, he went in compound. Oh, he did? Yeah, because he's sure? like, yeah, he said it. That's what he said. Okay. I wonder if he meant to say trad bow, but he said compound. I thought I saw a picture. He sent me a picture. He might have accidentally said that, but I know for a fact he said it because I just listened to it. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> dudes definitely do it because he said, he said, I, I was under the impression that he like strictly only is looking to harvest animals with a trad bow to, you know, have it as like be the man, yeah, as like real, as, do. as real and close and like as yeah. difficult and challenging as it can pretty much get. It's not so like much a, the close that would, um. I would, would be my like worry point on like that size of a bit Kodiak bears, you know, mm -hmm. like it's just the, um, generating enough power with a trad bow to push a really heavy arrow. Cause I, I feel like when you're shooting game that big, you really want to be pushing a lot of punch of grains, through. five, 600 grains. And when you're, you know, trad bows, you're really only pulling like, you know, 60, 70 pounds mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. that. And it's not, it's not compounded like a compound bow, right? Like yeah. We're, 60, we're 60, 70 pounds on yeah. a compound bow is 300 feet per second. Yeah. You're not getting near that with a trad bow, which is a lot of the reason why those guys do get so close. And also, cause I mean, there's guys that are, can absolutely shoot the lights out like accuracy is not the issue at yeah. 40 yards i mean i i watched a guy at winter strong uh he was actually on that show alone is that sornex yeah mm -hmm. he was on that show alone um the following year and he he is, is he like, the idaho guy he's like um no i'm not i can't remember where he's from he makes his own bows okay like and his own arrows I think it is like he guy. cuts like osage mm -hmm. he has a thing like uh, he has a um deal where like you can go out to his i think it's his property too and like cut down these osage trees and he'll kill them out dry and get them and then like you can build a bow and so like you're shaving and then you're like putting this thing putting tension on it and then you're like trimming off to get it balanced it's crazy it's unbelievable way and that guy Osage. was unbelievably accurate at 40 50 60 yards with a trap with a bow he made shooting arrows that he made damn that's badass yeah impressive but yeah we're looking forward to seeing that hopefully here in the next four or five episodes check it out osage tree yep <clears throat> so that's like the um the north american wood that was used yeah uh yeah because you got to think like they're doing stuff in south america they're doing stuff in africa 
they do some other like i think they you could probably just google like how to make what do you what wood do you make your own trad bow out of or they call them stick bows but i think like osage is like one of the prominent ones He might even be on. Oh, my images hold on. Do you want to just pull up? Some arm? of the best uh, wood for yeah. making bows include Osage, orange, yew, ash, black locust, and hickory. Most hard woods like oak and maple will work. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm sure that there's like, there's a reason for that. Maybe Osage like has the grains are very uniform. I'm sure there's so much that plays into it because you wouldn't the grains need to be straight so when you are removing material you're not like weakening it mm. it says maple is one of the best bow woods for recurve bows yeah now will they make the the um the arrow and the bow out of the same wood that i don't know mm. oh what's the best wood for bows archery topic one osage orange two bamboo three red oak four hickory five birch six Eep, Ipe, seven eastern red cedar, eight plum. Yeah, so I wonder like where Osage is found. <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't know it. Like Native Americans made their bows out of. Um, honestly, I never. Have you read? Um, oh man, what's that called? Uh, Nights of the Summer Moon. Oh, Oklahoma. Okay, that makes sense. That's uh. Oh, the Osage is an American Indian tribe. Huh. Oh, I should have put Osage trees. Yeah. Oh, so a lot of the Midwest. Oklahoma, Texas, yeah. Was Osage trees bamboo and what? Uh, so there was an eastern cedar. Yeah. Yeah, I I forget what his Instagram handle is, but they go into that um in this book. Summer Oh, Empire of the Summer Moon? Yeah. Oh, dude. yeah, that book's amazing. You read that? Yeah. You read that, Brandon? Well, No. Someone read it oh, to I've me. Seen, I've oh, seen audio. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been really, a minute since I've dude, read it a book. It's amazing. Is I'll, I'll I read, read a lot of books. Is that yeah. a long one? Not exceptionally mm -hmm. long. But Empire it's so of the summer Empire Summer Moon Empire of the Summer Moon some savage mm. some savage oh, dude, stuff it's so good book. it is so good yeah it's great but I just I just finished a Cormac McCarthy book today Cormac McCarthy yeah you you don't read him uh uh oh you've seen his movies Cormac McCarthy No Country for Old Men oh okay yeah mm, yeah I'm looking for new authors oh, oh. Dude, he's that's the greatest living American author. Been reading all Michener stuff. Blood Meridian's probably his like most famous book. The which road. it's Blood Meridian. What's he write about? Like American a lot of stuff. Um violence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just like like tribal stuff or all of it. Okay. I mean, no history no, or no country for old men. Like you've seen that movie. Yeah. Okay. It's gotcha, gotcha. The road. Okay. Which was like post apocalyptic. He is a he I think he's a scientist. He's a obviously a highly intelligent man. I know he lives um he he spends a lot of time at um there's like a think tank type scientific place in New Mexico. I'm totally butchering this. But oh, they made that into a movie. The Road, yeah. <clears throat> Oh, I didn't uh, watch that. Most movie. of his stuff, watch, all the book. pretty horses, mm -hmm. Matt Damon. Uh, you remember that movie, The Counselor? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all where like Brad Pitt, and they had the like, they put that thing on you, and it just kept tightening. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. It cut your head off, right? Like that's the type. That's time type of something. violence he writes about. Damn, I'm surprised that, uh, and I don't know if they could do it now. They couldn't do it properly. He probably wouldn't allow them to do it, but. Uh, that book that I pointed out, which is Blood Meridian, which is probably like that's his opus, I guess you would say. That book is uh, I, I don't know how you can make it how where it would be 
Oh, okay. like how you can it's make very it visual? Inappro- culturally inappropriate. Oh. Mm. So to make it to make it how the book is now, I don't think you could make it. Yeah. You couldn't but make it, it a movie? Well, I want to read it now. I don't think he would allow it to be made into a movie because they couldn't do it how it the justice. book is written. Mm. Yeah. It's too okay. um there's a lot of uh it's too unwoke. I haven't seen <laughs> it. It is asleep, bro. It's in a coma. <laughs> it is in a coma. I haven't seen <laughs> the, the road. You haven't? I'm, I'm watching the trailer right now, and I've never... I, I the book is better. Okay. The book is I think one I of my favorites of him. It's 2009, so it's not like a new movie. No, and it was... It, like, all of his... Uh, everything that he's done that's been made into a movie has had, like, fantastic actors. All of it. Yeah. Okay. And all the movies are, like... Every movie's been good. Oh, it look, yeah. It I'm going to get into that. Counselor was good. No Country for Old Man was obviously good. Yeah. Is the book better than the movie? They're always better than the movie. Yeah. The yeah. Book is always they are. But with the like road, with the it road it's very, um, man, he writes like, I, I don't, I guess I've probably heard someone describe him way better than i ever could but he is one of those people who like his research on the era that he's writing Mm. about Mm. is so like so researched that there's no like there's no mistakes of like yeah this is the weapon that that person had a lot of historical facts in there yes and he's like kind of writing and the book that i just finished which is it's really short it's just um i believe it's a two-part series and it's like the perspective of the brother and the perspective of the sister and i listened to the i just finished the audiobook of the one with the sister and same story but two different perspectives i believe so okay well that's cool so yeah and it's i mean he writes about fucked up shit so it's like it's pretty much about this girl who is a genius she's like a mathematical genius she like her dad was uh one of the people on the manhattan project one of the scientists that Mm -hmm. built the atom bombs on and so like she's super smart her brother's super smart you find out at the end of this book spoiler alert that she is uh she's pretty much only like loved one person their entire life and it was her brother Mm. Mm. and she had like tried to like come on to her brother ask her brother to marry her stuff Mm. like this is what you find out in the end so now i gotta and the brother in this book is in a coma and they want to like take him off life support because he's a race car driver in france and he was in a bad wreck got wrecked yeah so yeah it's but so that's the type he writes about a lot of like like nothing he writes has a happy ending <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. he's that right. writer right, like right there's right. no storybook ending in any of his books <clears throat> like they yeah. end and you're like that was fucked Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. i guess we're like like the good characters they die because yeah. <laughs> that's well, re- yeah because like- he writes like real and he's like <laughs> very apocalyptic and he's very like yeah i mean he he lives that world with whatever think tank that they're at they're like you know he lives in that world where they're like yeah this isn't it doesn't end with like a clip this isn't here. good like well i mean he's like processing like the whole humanity thing on earth like this doesn't end well yeah for anyone there's yeah, no like it, there's no outcome. hey we get a group of awesome people who made it off here and yeah. went to mars and started a whole new colony he's like nah, they, no they all that's die. not how this is gonna happen <laughs> We all die. We're either going to ruin this place to where it's like, <laughs> yeah. or we're going to blow it up with nuclear weapons, the or ni- the nice another meteor is going to hit this thing and wipe out all <laughs> life on Earth again. <laughs> and that's where he lies. Well, it's so like the end of that's uh, how No Country for Old Men when the when the main character's wife, you know, gets by through the whole thing, and then she comes home after her mom's funeral, and he's sitting in the chair. Yeah. you know ready to kill her yeah. kills her yeah of course then he goes and gets into like a huge car wreck and yeah annihilates his arm yeah nobody wins and lives yeah. out of his there stuff. but that's one of those movies no matter where it's at 
<clears throat> if you flip and it's on, you, I just have oh, to watch it. Oh, you're hooked on it. Uh, yeah. Just going to have to finish that one. Yeah, that's how. It that is. one, um, The Revenant, and mm-hmm. Goodfellas. Mm-hmm. No matter where they're at, if I turn it and it's on, yep. if even there's like 15 minutes left or an hour or whatever. I'm <laughs> the just very like, beginning, like, well, I'm just going to watch this now. <laughs> and Friday. <laughs> On Friday, the original Friday? Yeah. And Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I can watch Friday from anywhere oh, in that movie. Oh, that's a good one, and too, man. And it's funny every single time you watch it. It's timeless. Is the, isn't it, too, one of those movies that you, like, you've seen, I don't know. I don't you know every times, line. But there's always something that maybe, like, yeah. you see or you caught a joke or a facial yeah. expression or something that you didn't see the first time, and it, like, makes you laugh. It's so good. Every single time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a nice little tidbit of the conversation there. Yeah, I'm mean, looking into those books now, man. Yeah, for I haven't sure, read any man. of this stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna watch good. the road too. And I'm always into that. Trailer. Yeah, I feel like I, w- I feel like I would want to audio book his books so that they could be yeah. read to me the way that my my um imagination would like unlock and like really take it all in. Yeah, and I think like sometimes I have a hard time reading books like that where I'll get a little bit lost or I'll get distracted yeah. and I'll have to go back and read it again because I like miss something. Uh, I yeah, I don't. I um, have that. I don't retain that. as that, much when I'm reading it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I've because that asleep. happens to me. I I normally read to go to bed and turn my brain off because I just have to or else I'm going to be like thinking about a million God, things. I yeah. should do that so much. More <clears> it's the best way I think for me to go to bed. No matter what time it is. If I go to bed at 2 in the morning, midnight, 3 a.m., yeah. <clears throat> I start read reading. 10 minutes or something. And I'll always will read until it's like like it like falls yeah, in my face. Nodding. Yeah. And then I'll just back. I've been reading on my phone a lot. And I'll just back page two pages. And then put oh, the phone market. down. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's smart. Because then I'll be like, okay, now I remember where we're at. Okay. Yeah, because those like last five minutes were just like you're nodding off. Like, yeah. Uh, like you weren't even really focused on it. Mm-hmm. Just reading the words but not comprehending it. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I do okay. so much driving that the audiobooks are perfect for me. And I and I love oh, yeah. being able to like I do the same thing with those. <clears throat> like I go back and I'll be like, "Oh, I remember all this. Ooh, but I didn't pick up on that." And I, and I can listen to like a lot of the same books over and over. I've never listened to audiobook ever yeah. once. This one was the first one listen where Listen to an audiobook? Never. Really? I've always read them. Oh, dude, it's amazing. I just think I don't know why I think like it's like I'm when a you pretty were, fast reader, so I might think like, oh, this is you can up to speed. It, it's all about oh, you the, can. Um, yeah. <clears throat> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, you can like you like, can slow times one, you, times you, two, times yeah, you three, can change like, the speed blah, blah, like blah, blah, one, blah. one, one point five, one point oh. two. You can do it with podcasts too. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Like yeah. who listens to the podcast at two speed? I did on accident. I was like, man, what's wrong with me to you? <laughs> like these guys got to get their shit together. <laughs> like they don't, like, how did no one catch this? I listened to like three. I was like, man, it's another episode. And then my wife was like, you probably just have it on the faster speed. And I was like, what faster speed? <laughs> like, why would there Come be on, a faster speed guy. for a podcast? She was like, yeah, you do. You have it on one and a half. And I was like, one and a half what? She's like, one and a half times the speed that they're talking at. And I was like, oh, ah, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> Is, doesn't it also but, depend on the narrator? Of, of I the like book? it when the author reads the book. I don't oh. like it when, when I don't, not that I don't like it. I prefer the author to read it. Mm. But on this one, this one that I just did, like this whole book is just two characters because she admits herself to a hospital. That was the Empire. Because she sees... Or no, no, the... Um, uh, it's, I actually forget what it's called. It's we, The name yeah. of it is the um, place that she admits herself to. Mm. Uh, but the author's reading it. He's not. Oh, it's the person, the character? I don't, I don't think most authors are uh, On this one, they just pick they? two people. Most um, authors do want to read their own. This one's uh, called oh, okay. Ste- Stella Morris, and that's the just the name of the facility that she checks herself into. Mm. And um, so it's just the doctor and her are the only two characters. So there's two people reading the part. So it's almost like a movie. Mm. So it's like a girl, oh. and they do a great job in it. So it's like you're and listening the man's to voice a, will come in. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they're reading the two parts. Yeah, I've never experienced that in a book before, and I was like, oh, oh two kinda, narrators. That's kind of brilliant. Yeah, I'd like to like, get into that, man. Like reading, I'm pretty good at reading kids' books. Yeah, just like 
animating it and you know well oh, see, i was, that, I was telling good. brock when he when he got when like 36 was over and he was kind of in like what am i gonna do if bef- and he was kind of like helping out or no he was working on a different radio station and he hadn't got the morning show gig mm-hmm. thing um i was like i that was when i was like just getting into audiobooks because i was driving and i was like i need more than podcasts and i need more than music like podcasts was like i think i was at that point i was listening to like rogan and meat eater and i was just like i'm getting over this quick you know yeah and then so i started listening to audiobooks because nate turned me on to that because that's kind of like our thing we've always just like kind of it's really good books. for like a hunt too oh, like i used not. to play um remember i would play the uh oh the historian his, histor uh history hardcore, hardcore history. history oh yeah oh, i used to that love so playing great. that on oh, hunts yeah. just like late night in the tp just throw the mongols, or just the weathered mongols out. is the best uh, one yes it's like was that three parts two parts <clears throat> like two or three four hour each parts yeah yeah amazing yeah, all this stuff is amazing. Well, those will just like unlock your imagination. Oh yeah, it's so good. That's why I like the audiobook because it reminds me of like fourth or fifth grade when you sat around like yeah, in a circle and the, read, and the teacher, teacher read a book. Yeah. yeah. And it just always seemed like the story and the and the imagery in my head just like came alive and I could just like imagine and I could see exactly what she was reading. You know, and that's what an audio book. That's why I like when the author reads it because, <clears throat> you know, when you're, when you're reading a book, you're just reading. You're not like putting the pauses and like, you know, mm, when, yeah. it, especially when it's like, it's not just information part of the book. Like it's quotes. Yeah. Like you're not handling that the way it would be handled if it was like being on, on a movie or whatever like you know what i mean and so like when the author reads it they read it how they want it how they wrote it yeah yeah so like you get those pauses and you kind of i feel like i pick up more when i'm just reading it i'm just like reading it but i wonder if it changes your how you visualize the characters and or the setting if you're reading it versus like it's more accurate for me if someone's reading it like my imagination like i said earlier it because then, cause then like, I can concentrate on that right. versus the reading. That. I think I, I think I imagine the like world they're drawing better when it's being read to me. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, just like I'm in school. Have to try that. But it's been a minute since I actually read a book, so maybe, maybe I'm wrong. It's, <laughs> it's like you have to have patience. But like hunting, one hundred percent. When we got stuck in. Uh, in that snowstorm sheep hunt and we were like in the tent for 36 hours waiting for it to like uh melt enough that we could start traveling again like we listened to the entire book of sapiens because i had it downloaded yeah i bet that was so great oh it was awesome yeah give you something to do jack put on uh which was really good too i'd never done that either like audio comedy shows (laughs) that's a good one so we listened to um several different tom segura yeah dude we're just laughing our, uh, it's maybe kind of bad because you just can't help but just laugh and you're like trying to be quiet and you're just fucking laughing dude and of <laughs> course i've been smoking and just like fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how good was bert chrysler like <clears throat> dude oh that was great oh yeah you guys went it, the next it, night him and his team were fucking hilarious man i was dying <laughs> that oh. was good i like the third crack me up act the third kid with the long hair did he was oh, he they, third went, they didn't go in that order oh they did he was he like was second f- yeah oh, okay. no he was first first he was first that dude was hilarious yeah they probably and then switch the it up the second then. guy was also uh, the third guy was so they must have been the opposite way yeah that, i'm sure they give like that the, probably went one two three and then it went three two one yeah direct support switches so so you guys for you guys i like the first and the second guy that's who we liked. Yeah. The other guy yeah. was, he was all right. He was a little too, like, straight in there. I don't know. I think then we probably had the same third guy. Yeah. Because that's how yeah. he was. Yeah. Like, kind of clean good. cut, kind of. But yeah. I was telling Jamie, because she was like, it's weird how, like, the first two guys were funnier than the third guy. And I was like, they might not be, though. The third guy might kind of dumb it down a little because you don't, you don't want to be 
better than the the, the, the main yeah. the main the act. Main but, act. But that goes to show that okay. that's because they did it the opposite way. So they're probably just giving them some shine because it probably sucks to be the first guy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Or right. it sucks to be the guy the right before the main yet. the main event. You know what yeah. I mean? So they probably just go, all right, we'll go one two three and then three two one and then one two three and three two one. They might even. Rosh and Bull out there for their Dude, cards, uh, homie, know? homie's like opening joke about Alaska and the roads. Oh, uh, he is so holy good. fuck, dude. I do you, do you, I don't know if he used the same material, but it was like something along the lines of like Alaska. You got to be here in December if you're running from the law. Because where else <laughs> can you drive around with like three inches of crusty snow on your license plate and yeah. a tail light out, and you'll never get pulled over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think he used that one, dude. The, he had, the, he had, and the cars look like uh, kittens crawling on like wet ice or something. Yeah, like <laughs> he was like, yeah, he was like, I wish I he could was like driving it, dude, around. It, it. it reminds me of best. like he's like kittens on a hardwood floor. That's what it was, kittens on a hardwood floor, <laughs> trying to run away. Yeah, there he was good. I hope, I really hope that he does like alaska as much as he hyped it up in that thing and yeah. i bet that he does he seems like i mean the fans he's a pretty lo- fans loved him oh yeah he had the one joke though where the lady was like too far bert i know and and like i, I can't stand when people start fucking church i mean he it wasn't like a school shooting oh, joke. He t- no he, he took a pretty like oh, okay. that was like i mean i didn't <laughs> laugh i didn't laugh at it I was kind of. I was like, I, 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 I know that's common. I, it's just, it's no, I, I just, it just I didn't. It didn't it. like. I laughed at everything. I laughed at everything like hysterically, and then he dropped that one, and I was kind of like, Ooh. yeah, that one was a little bit harsh. And then, and then the lady said it, and then he instantly like rebuttal. He's like, "You're right, ma'am. That one's too far." And he like switched and just like kept it going. Yeah. So he was good at just like flipping it. Like yeah. it's almost like he just threw it in there to see what the reaction would yeah. be, and the, a lot of the crowd didn't laugh like me. Yeah, and it was just like ooh, like whoop, and then. But, but you have to take that shit with a grain of salt, man. Well, this is comedy. He said later like, in the show too. He was like, he pretty much insinuated like, there's a lot of towns that I can't say these jokes, but I know that I'm you in a red get state. Away with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm in a red <laughs> state. Right, and I can did. say some he shit did. up here. He yeah, <laughs> Alaskans are not sensitive. Yeah. No, that's he was true. like, you guys are not soft people. No, he did good. He did good, and I, I. I Oftentimes was looking at the crowd's reaction to his stuff, and yeah. everybody had a good sense of humor. Oh, absolutely! I, mean, I think that great. we do. I think that we. I mean, I don't. I think that it. We take it for. I've I've explained this a million times to people that aren't from here. Like, you forget that your day to day, your year, like right. This this whole podcast is like to sum up the last year right so if you take your year and all the things that you did that was just that was just another year of your life that is everyone else that doesn't live here that is their bucket list (laughs) and you just that's just your year yeah yeah Yeah. that's just like and and to me like i didn't like there's a lot of shit i wish i did do that I didn't do. Mm-hmm. Same here. Like my bucket list. Mm-hmm. I didn't touch it. You just did your regular stuff. I just did regular <laughs> shit. <laughs> With, that is everyone yeah, else's is, bucket list. Yeah, that's a good and way to put it. And we forget about that. Yeah. Like we forget. Like, I mean, and you, and then you get reminded like at his show where he's like, this place is unfucking real. He's talking about Alyeska and he's like, he couldn't have come at like, a better time for I'm that. just getting shots. The snowboarding was unreal. We're smoking <laughs> joints. He's like, you guys fucking party. <laughs> you go back to the lodge, have a duck fart. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I knew that he was re- like, he really went. Yes. that That's yeah. when yeah. he was like, if he had duck farts. I was like, yep, you weren't lying. You really yep. were. Yeah. At yeah. Alaska. Well, and then he, his beanie that he was wearing was a coal brand, yeah. which they sell at the boutique yep. at the, at the hotel. Yep. And I was like, all right. Yeah. He, he, went and he sure. ended up going to the Bush company too. So that's what he said. What he, said. I saw, I, he went both nights. I saw a picture of. Did he really? Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> like that's a lot of energy to go after a day of snowboarding to go hard and then do a show and then go to the Bush Company, bro. Jeez, that guy doesn't turn it off though. No, like he, he is no go time. But I hope that he does come back and do like that whole party at Alaska. Like oh, how yeah. dope would that oh, be if he like hosts a party at Sitzmark? Oh, that, I don't even know if like Day Lodge the or whatever could even handle that. Oh, they there, can, there'd be thousands and thousands. Uh, true. 
True. Yeah, it'll go off. Very, very, very good it. point. Yeah, and I, I wondered too, like, man, like, was Alaska really going to, like, show up for him? Because Alaska has, like, a, a, a pretty, like, bad habit of, like, not showing up for acts. Oh, yeah. Because you saw his, like, hype video before the show. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, he's, like, cruise, there's tailgate parties, like, before a show. And, like, yeah. fans showing up in, like, you know, droves and, and, and big markets. Yeah. Where he's feeling, like, thousands and thousands, like, you know, big, like, football you know, baseball stadiums and shit. And I'm like, I mean, like, thank God we had the Alaska well, they, Airlines Arena and it wasn't at the fucking Egan or Sullivan. And it sold out, right? Because so, oh, that's yeah. why no, they had sold out. the show you went to mm-hmm. was the second. It was actually the second show, even though it was the first show. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was. I, I just, I was like, fuck, man, I hope like. Well, that's probably yeah. how they, everybody that's probably really how they play it, which is smart. They're like, all right, we're going to go one show. And if it sells out right away, we know we can sell another show. Mm-hmm. I feel like Alaska's getting a lot better at that because I think like the younger generation mm. is, uh, well, has travels, is a little more traveled yeah. than like the older, mm. the older people here, like they traveled, but it was like for vacations. And I think like our generation and our friends like travel specifically for shows or comedy shows or yeah, music yeah. or whatever. Long so I think like we yeah. embrace it a little better. <clears throat> because That's a good but point. dude, I know when I was promoting music, it was terrifying. A- anytime you wanted to That's bring something point. that was current, I was always like, you know what would really sell out up here? Def Leopard. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, to- that'll sell out for sure. <laughs> yeah. Toby Keith. <laughs> yeah. Like he'll. Well, you know, country, there's some old school. No, that's what I mean, though. It's like you just, you know, what was it when Aerosmith came? It was like yeah. the biggest fucking show Alaska's ever seen. Yeah. But then Lil Wayne c- comes like four years ago, five years ago, and it was just pathetic. Yeah. And I know it's totally different genres, but I'm like mega star hip hop rapper. Yeah. I mean like, Kendrick played the state fair. <laughs> That's, yeah, yeah that's crazy. I, I mean, Kendrick like, Lamar. Those dudes can, the those dudes can have 40, 50, 60,000 people all day long at a, a venue show up for a show. Yeah. And we can barely get like yeah. 1,800 people to come. I mean, Jamie and I went to the weekend. It was sold out in a football stadium. <laughs> that must be a good yeah. show. Unreal. I bet. Just laser. Not even a huge fan of him, but it was unreal. Yeah. Like all the props. The and stage everything. went from the end zone to the like 60 yard line. Oh, really? Yeah. It was. It was un- and he had these like, yeah, it was. I have video footage. I'd me. like to go to any of those big, even like a um, Taylor Swift or some kind of like massive, massive. You just know it's a production. Well, this doesn't come out till after Christmas. So I can say we got uh, Jordan and Brandon tickets to uh, SZA in mm. Austin. That'll be popping. That's cool. What a cool gift, man. That's going to be, yeah, they both. And Jordan, Jordan's been like looked on there because, you know, Brand, her brother's living in Austin now. She saw that show and she's like, I, d- I just looked on to just check and it's like sold out already. So oh, yeah. weird, Jamie. I was like, mm, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that was great. And Brandon doesn't know either. We just called him and we're like, hey, what are you doing? You know, March 9th. He's like, March? I don't know. We're like, <laughs> don't do anything. <laughs> Stay in town. <laughs> don't book Why? a flight. We don't worry going. about it. We got just, something going. <laughs> just put it on your calendar that you will be there. That's yeah. funny. <clears throat> Well, the show YouTube will come out Saturday. Is that Christmas is Saturday? It uh, is. That's Christmas Eve. Ooh. Christmas okay. is Sunday. Well, they won't be watching you, okay. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. No, you'll but be safe. I know. Maybe they will. Who knows? Yeah, it'll be safe. Yeah, because I looked at the calendar and I was like, we should kind of do like a year end. I kind of want to do like a review of the podcast, but Daniel vetoed that. And I'm like, all right, that's probably true. I just kind of want to like recap them all. Yeah. Because it's like these these weeks just fly by. You know, we have guests and we have our podcast and then like. Dude, almost 100. It, that's crazy. Well, you just move on to the next one because like you have to get ready for the next one. And then yeah. we have events and things going on in between. And it's just like everything's moving so fucking fast. It's so easy to forget like eight weeks ago. Like, uh, what? Who, who, who was have? here? Yeah. And like, not that you forget the people because each individual recording is no, unique but, I mean, in you itself, got a but job, you got it's just family, a lot going on and it's like man shit it's like kind of cool to look back on some of it a little bit and yeah just kind of like smell the roses i guess a little bit on it because it yeah. just yeah you just this thing just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and that's yeah. all you focus on is like the next one the next one the next one well it's become 
a machine for you guys. A machine. Point. That's a good analogy. Yeah, yeah. it is. I mean, that. it's like you can't really turn it off. Well, I was talking to yeah, Josh no about way. it, and I was like talking about the meat party and just the cool, all the cool people that we've met and the connections we've made with people like all over the state, just like in different cool fields that they're in or yeah learning about new stuff and just cool mm-hmm. people that now nah, i could call this guy or call that girl yeah. about this or that and i was like he's like dang by the time in two years you guys gonna have to have the meat party at the egan center because i was because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i was like because the last time we just invite people that are guests and then like our close friends yeah and it was already 200 people and like we just had 50 more guests it was already. You know what I'm it so was gonna already be like out of it's control. It's gonna be a hundred more people. And then they have a plus one. It was then. out of control, and it was just at your house, bro. And it, yeah. the last Wild Project didn't exist. <laughs> it was a lot. Yeah, and last year's like house that was party a big was house like, party. It was like it was kind of almost too much. Yeah, because the neighborhood got a little mad, and so it was like, oh man. And yeah, that's the thing, man. We wanted to like do it like that. You need again. commercial. You need commercial totally, places dude. to do it. Now we do just because we need the the space and the parking is probably the most important yeah. part. The parking, mm, yeah, and then parking where people can like leave their car if they want because a lot of folks had like a DD, maybe one of the two like kept their shit together while the other one went off the rails. You know so. what would actually be a pretty <laughs> decent place for it, and the I little, know it, the little brothers, man, they had a rough night that night. It doesn't, it doesn't Everybody's work in brother. like February, but. The Hilltop Chalet. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, yeah. It's actually mm-hmm. a pretty good venue. And and it, they ran it out like for a lot yeah, of stuff. Well, it's, a non-pro- my, it's a non profit. My um son who picked up snowboarding this year. Well, he used to go, you know, just at, Mateo at the or hill. No? Mateo. Oh cool. His best friend, his dad is the general manager there. So oh oh yeah, the, you were saying that. Yeah, yeah now he yeah. can just go. But we're doing it in April, so that might be perfect. Because it's like done. Yeah, it could be. Could be for sure. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think about snow that. Snow keeps good coming like it is yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe it not. ain't going to be done in April. <laughs> yeah. Well, the April was cool because we had like the daylight. Yeah. It was a little warmer. So, like, you could go out on the porch and, you know, enjoy other um, extracurriculars outside. And then it just seemed to be a pocket where, like, everybody was in town. Yeah. Like, everybody had gone through their winter vacations. Yeah, they weren't like gearing up to go fishing and camping yet because it wasn't ready. So it's almost like everybody was just like waiting for summer to come. Yeah, it's like that. And they were home April and October, like that's just between seasons. Where yeah. yeah, where people are actually home. Even November too. I mean, yeah, people do true. start to travel a little bit. Thanksgiving with family or stuff mm-hmm. like that, but those two months are definitely yeah. like and you're itching months. to do something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, April. you're ready. Yo, you're yeah. so ready. Summer's done, but winter's not here. Not really. Yeah. They didn't stop Jay Liska from snowboarding on down. No, but <laughs> Jay Liska is <laughs> no, diff- no, no, that's no. a different breed. It's <laughs> a different breed. I just rode down the mountain down here. <laughs> I need a ride back. We were, like, up. literally right down below his house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. Barney Sports Chalet, supplying hunters with the best hand-selected gear since 1963. Barney specializes in supplying hunters with the absolute best Alaskan proven gear on the market for some of nature's most rugged and demanding terrain. Whether you're headed to the remote volcanic islands of the Alaska Peninsula in search of a brown bear or the shale infested glacial valleys of the Brooks Range for dull sheep, it is critical you choose the right gear for your dream hunt. Don't miss Barney's exclusive brand, Frontier Gear of Alaska, tested from the high mountains of Tajikistan to the extreme conditions of Alaska. These products were designed for high performance and durability. Frontier Gear was derived from decades of experience hunting big game in Alaska. Paired with other top brands, it provides you the absolute best gear selection anywhere in the world. Stop in at Barney Sports Chalet in Anchorage on Northern Lights or check out their custom website and reference tool at barneysports.com. Total Truck and Alaska Overlander, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and overlanding products, providing all-inclusive rental vehicles and trailers custom outfitted to explore the Alaskan backcountry with a unique and convenient traveling experience. At Total Truck, you can find brands such as ARE, RSI Smart Caps, Goose Gear, iCamper, Front Runner, Rigid Lights, Rhino Linings Bed Liners, and everything you need to outfit your truck or SUV. 
Alaska Overlander provides 4x4 vehicles and expedition trailers custom modified for Alaskan adventures and outfitted with rooftop tents, fridges, and all the camping and cooking gear you need to start exploring. Visit them at alaskaoverlander.com. Oh, yeah, get the aguardiente flowing. Yeah, it was mayhem. Yeah, we always celebrate Christmas Eve. And Christmas Day, we don't do nothing. I like that. I like it better. But you guys shift off the mule deer thing? Well, well I, was selling, um, I was selling them. Um, I might go to Colombia <coughs> for next Christmas for like three well, weeks. We're, we're going to the Philippines for three weeks. But if we were able to go early, like I think you were talking about, like there was like a window of time in like the first, it's like the fifth or something. You, you have like this time. You can go yeah, I mean, even like, like the time. Yeah, I'd have to. We'll have to look at it. We'll I mean, have to it's look a, at it's it. down the road, but I mean, but I'd rather plan it now and just be like, boom, this I, is I happening. Agree. I agree. Well, yeah, and I'm only saying December because we have those tags that are good through the whole year of 2023. Mm -hmm. We could always try and get tags next year and mm. go January also. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that that January is actually better hunting because the rut. Oh, December yeah. would be not as good like, of like, hunting. Like pre-rut. Yeah, because no, no, I shouldn't say that the hunting wouldn't be as good in December, but it's the peak time easy. Is. It's easier because it's archery. Mm -hmm. So okay, there. The rut really helps you out. Yeah, you yeah. need deer to be dumb. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking about January, I want to um, promote. The uh, live podcast we got going on January 17th, um, it's going to be at the Palmer Ale House. Uh, we're going to bring a whole big crew of ours. There's huge, huge giveaways happening. Huge. What did it say? 16th. 16th, my bad. January 16th. Yep, don't show up the 17th. We'll be gone. <laughs> um, the 16th, that is a Monday. That is Martin Luther King Day. Um, so we're going to be out there all day. We're going to we're gonna plan to go by the uh, Connoisseur Lounge and hang out over there for a little bit in the day. Go set up over there at the Palmer House at night. Um, we've teamed up with BHA. We have a whole bunch of giveaways. Um, pretty much we um, these are the giveaways. You can go to our page. You can go to BHA, Alaska Chapters page, and, and sign up. Um, they are doing... Uh, Two NRS Fishing Chinook PFDs, $250 in store credit to Mystery Ranch, $400 store credit to Grundens and Fish Pond USA, and a guided float trip with Fish Hound Expeditions. And also at the event, um, 15 new BHM members that sign up will join and receive a one-year subscription to Onyx Hunt. Damn, that makes it worth it right there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Big time. Yep. I so that um, subscription is a $100. Yeah, so yeah, it's, I, for it's, one year, I think it's hundred bucks. Yeah, and I think a BHA membership is like thirty five bucks. Yeah, so you're getting so you're getting deal. definitely bang for your buck. So you can go to our page or go to BHA Alaska's page and um, go to the sign up to enter to win. You got to go to their actual page to sign up. It's not one of those like follow us, follow him, and tell seven friends. Yeah, you got to actually go to the page um, to sign in. Um, so we're hoping everyone's going to come out that day, um, that evening. It's going to be from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, obviously, we're going to try to start right on time. Um, and uh, we're going to bring our entire crew. We'll have a bunch of merch and stuff out there for sale and, and stickers and a whole bunch of uh, our people out there drinking some beers. And should be an awesome time. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited for that, man. Um, Dude, speaking on the Onyx, um, is that – the best um like mapping tracking thing there's been a lot of new ones i've heard gaia i've heard other ones uh, i haven't done too base much map? I've never, base I've never, map i've never really seen base map um i haven't done that much research are you guys still rocking onyx i mean it's obviously legit i use uh, onyx and i also use base map base map has a feature that onyx doesn't have that i really like which is um I think I, sh I don't know if I showed you guys. So you can, um, say you took a shot across a little ravine or, or whatever in Alaska with sheep or something like that. It's not really a big deal, but I'm sure everyone who's hunted moose has shot a moose and then had trouble finding 
Mm. The dead moose, not because so you're it talking ran like off. a wooded area. It's like well, just because you like took you took a shot and you think you know where it is, and mm-hmm. then when you get there, you're like, ugh. Uh, and I yeah. mean, they they're just you know they blend they in, disappear. Yeah. So if you were to take and it, you know if you took a shot across a little canyon or anything, they have a thing on there where like if you took a shot that was you know kind of far, four hundred, five hundred, three hundred, whatever yards you probably ranged it i hope you ranged it Mm -hmm. if you didn't range it i do like this i close one eye and i say yep that's 270 you need to check your goddamn (laughs) shit and get a range (laughs) from anyway so if you ranged it and you know where that is like you you're looking at your shot before you start heading over there you can take a photo and Mm. put the crosshairs on their app at the exact spot where like I know this is where he was. Mm-hmm. And then you enter in the yardage that you ranged him at. Mm-hmm. And then you click the azimuth in this and it'll walk you into that spot. Oh, so you can't get turned around or lost or like, yeah. It, it, so know. when you get over, so when you, when you are Alder like, fest. you're like, okay, he's by that tree. And then you get over there and you're like, ah, oh, that, was it that, that tree? tree don't look the same as it did up there. You know how you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you get down into some ravine. It, will, like, it will walk you into oh, that's within f- a foot of yeah. where you it's you've pretty, tested it. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty impressive. Now, can you do it like at a longer distance? If Whatever you're, distance. If so you, if you're as like as here you can, and you're like, I want to get to that spot over there to glass this way, you can just boom. hundred percent. Oh, you can use really it for cool. that too. As long as your range finder will range it because it, the app itself can't, Oh, it doesn't come up with the range. Okay. So you have to range it and be like, this is 825 yards. Yeah. I mean, you could, uh, you could probably do like a line to line and it give you pretty decent range. Yeah. So when, so, but if you have a range finder, it'll be extremely accurate when you put those crosshairs on what, where you want to go, you enter in the yardage, the known yardage, which is like from your range finder, it will walk you right to that spot. So when you're walking and let's say you get off, does it show you a line? Yeah. It'll show you exactly okay, where so you are and it'll, it'll tell you, you where to go. Like so it shows the line that you're yeah. supposed to be on and then where you're at? Yeah. You're drifting, so go left. Okay. Go right. Yeah. Oh, oh that's cool. I'll correct you. It's pretty, it's pretty nice. So that's the only reason I have it. Other than that, I've been very happy with Onyx. Yeah. Um, they both have the same ability to like download offline yeah. maps. For your area, you can do like for me, like with Onyx, I will I'll I'll download like the medium, whatever resolution resolution. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't do the close, which is a bigger area. And then if I'm like I'm more than likely gonna be in this area, I'll do that one in the high Mm. resolution. Mm. And then just to make sure, like, well, if I get what happens if we don't see anything in there, we want to move, you know, because that's a pretty small. But you got to pre pre plan that, right? I haven't seen one yeah. where you can be like, "I'm here. I want the resolution map now." Well, if you had if you had cell reception, you yeah, could. Not yeah, not offline. Not offline. But, but, no, you have to pre download. But if you them. don't, yeah, not yet. Huh. Mm, why, yeah. why couldn't they do it? Well, you need internet to download. <laughs> yeah, that's mm. why. You know, you need bandwidth. To but maybe like, they could have like a pre, like the whole thing is already pre kind of on there and you can download a certain resolution from the spot. Yeah. Mm. The low resolution, you can damn near get half the state. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. it's not going to be as detailed as yeah. far as like. You're not running on X, huh? No, I haven't got it yet. Strava works really good too. And that's not even a hunting app. That's like a running biking app. I just been, really I've good. been just using um, the Topo map app. The Topo and then the InReach one. Yeah, I, I want to get on it. I'm going to get Onyx. You know the, but the, I've always been with like the homie that has it or something. So it's like, uh I like Onyx because um, it gives you property lines. It gives you ownership. It lets yeah, you know yeah. like that's, that's this cool. is private land. Mm-hmm. Like it was huge in Arizona because Arizona is like there's a lot of private land, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of pub or a lot of public land, but there's a lot of private mm-hmm. land like checkerboarded through it yeah it's not like here where it's like i'm in a state park and i'm not gonna hit private land yeah you don't have to really look yeah yeah there it's checkerboarded throughout 
all the public land so it's like like i literally we literally were on a mule deer and it like there was no fence it didn't jump a fence or nothing and he was like shit and i was like shit what i was like is that like we can't is it too wooded down there and he was like it's on private land mm. he just moved on to private land and i was like well, that's good to know what about gaia you heard of that my father-in-law yeah he's doing a big um he's big into those adventure bikes <clears throat> and so he's got a, a group of his uh buddies down there in washington they're gonna go all the way up the uh damn it what's the road so it's kind of like they had had planned to go do the uh trans-american highway no it's not that um they were gonna go do the road up to the brooks um but that road is gnarly but i guess there's one that's similar that still takes them to the arctic circle but it's in canada and I guess the road is way nicer. I forgot what it's called. Oh, they though. were going to take the Dalton. I said they're going to go do that, and then they're going to come back and do a bunch of Alaska. But I kind of talked them. I kind of talked them out of the Dalton. I was like, that is like those guys that ride the Dalton look like they're miserable. That's what I was telling them. I was like, it's they are especially miserable. you go and it starts <laughs> it's raining a little fucked. bit, and I that ran just into those boards. guys in Prudhoe when I was working up there. Yeah, those well, dudes look clapped out. Well, and then and not only that, like the tractor trailers, the trucks that are ripping by like 60. Oh, yeah, they're eating kick, dust. Kicking up fucking and these, dust and mud. And, and these dudes are like 70. They're not like young chickens, dude. Most, like, most of the people they'll, doing they'll those trips it. are older, older dudes. for sure. Yeah. 50s, mm. 60s, 70s. Yeah, I Tired talked to a guys. few of those guys in Prudhoe when I was working up there on the runway, and uh, they were like, yeah, not what I expected. Is uh well, even the unbelievably guys, beautiful, but when you got three hours of the same beautiful, it makes it less beautiful. I was like, yeah, it's old. Uh, it does when you're on a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, you got hemorrhoids. Oh man, <laughs> and you're, you're wet, just so muddy and, and like, teeth are gritty and grind. Yeah. You can't even swallow. Yeah, no. Fun. But it was a great chat, man. We got all into the gear because they got to go like they would. On like we would on a sheep hunt because they just have those little boxes so that everything is light and tight and yeah. Yeah, how dry, they're gonna cook and their and little everything. dry bags and and their little tents and all their stuff and it was a good little chat with him to talk about I think I talked to him into the reactor because he was gonna bring the um the uh, the pocket rocket the deal. pocket rocket and I was like oh man you're gonna just burn through fuel with that Hell thing I, yeah. you'll save a lot more with this and he's like oh tell my wife. <laughs> Yeah, so he uses. So uh, I got it out the garage and I was like, show. I was like, yeah, see? And then I took the pocket rocket. I was like, see? Oh, you're able this. to actually show them the difference? Yeah. Yeah, hands down, yeah. that reactor. Because a lot of times you'll just look it sure. online and you don't really know until you see it. And well, it, if you're trying to be ultra light, obviously the pocket rocket's much smaller. Yeah, right. but I think you still you still have to bring extra fuel, so you're not really lighter. No, no, that's what I mean. You know it's what like mean? it's a it's it's a misperception that yeah. That's well, the you're burning thing. liquid fuel versus gas too, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's and and you're and you're losing like the mechanics of the pan, and that's what boils the water so much faster. Yeah. It's not that the fuel is that much hotter. It's that. The way it like yeah, the way it sits, it in it's, over it's it dissipating heat so much more effectively. Yeah, way more efficient. Yeah, yeah, you're not losing all that heat. Yeah, because you throw a pocket rocket out, in and it's like open, one it's hot like, spot. Whoosh, you know, whoosh. like yeah. if you if you ever use a pocket and rocket and tried to cook eggs, like you got like one spot in that pan. That's yeah, it's yeah. really hot. cooking that egg, yeah. and the rest is like yeah, kind of burning shit in the middle. But yep. you can turn it. You can turn those some of those down. Yeah. Whereas, like, the reactor's just, like, full blast. They ain't yeah. no turning it down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to yeah, simmer you, something. No, you're just right. And they're, you're essentially just boiling water with those things. Yeah. Pretty much. They do yeah. have the pan, though, now. I saw that. I saw that. But I, I've that, never used That's got to be just on, just straight sear the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> keep it moving. Keep it moving. Yeah, I've never tried to cook anything. Well, we bring them. we bring the pocket rocket. I have the pocket rocket. And, and then he's got the reactor. What's well, a great backup for one? Yeah, number one, yeah, backup. It's tiny. Yeah, yeah so at least you got like another that thing in your another bag. thing to use. So I bring fuel for it, but then it's backup and fuel it, for the like, reactor. I don't know what I had, but it like I bought one for when I traveled to Costa Rica, and it'll burn any fuel, like gasoline, diesel. Mm, that's nice. White gas, kerosene, whatever. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah, as long as it ignites it. it because I, I didn't know what I'd have access to down there. Oh, and true. I, I put gasoline in it. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't burn as like, it's like gasoline. Gasoline is not a very efficient. 
no. fish and fuel. No, it's stinky it too. Super yeah, and then it's like, it's like yeah. sputtering, splattering, it's smoking, like, yeah. not consistent food. heat. It yeah. stinks. It stinks. I, never, I never even used it on that trip. No, that shit sucks. But the rocket's nice because I brought like a, another pot that I was cool with like cooking like meat in. Yeah. So like I put some, I forgot like like pieces of meat we put in there. Not tenderloin. I want to say oh, it was we cooked like, a bunch of meat. We might be able to do the ptarmigan. It was kind of like, yeah, that's right. We did the ptarmigan the one the time one. where I just like boiled it. I put it like a little bit of water. I bring yeah. a little thing of olive oil. And so I put some olive oil and water. And I know that water and oil separates, but you get it cooking. And it it um, lubricates the, the pot. Yeah. And then I was able to actually like kind of just kind of. Yeah, with the pocket rocket. You can I, I can just keep moving the pot so it doesn't burn to it. But then I was able to cook the meat. Without having a fire. Like, we were up on the mountain, no firewood, and I was able to actually cook us some meat. Yeah. Granted, it wasn't the best, because mm. it was just garlic powder and salt and pepper and, like, bet, olive oil and water. It tasted amazing. Oh, it was amazing, amazing. And yeah. Lie, yeah. Yeah. And then if you put a bunch of meat in there, like, it gets, like, a substantial amount of juice going. Yeah. The blood and everything, you know, and the meat juice. And then yep. all of a sudden, mm. it's, like, almost like in a crock pot, yeah. like, yeah. situation. And then, you know... Then, then you got the pot for boiling water. Then you got the pot for cooking meat yeah, or whatever no, that's you pretty, need. That's, so it's kind of nice to deal. have that. Then you're carrying the extra shit, but it's, it's a, a backup, backup though. It's you know, a backup. One exactly. of those things fails. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're done though. Yeah, but you know, I, I wanted to mention something on the Onyx real quick because I typically use my Garmin and the Earthmate. So uh, we shot Eric's moose this year. And it was right at dark, and I marked it. It wasn't hard to find so much. Like, we found the moose. Like, by the time we got back to camp, because we, we shot the moose, got a couple pictures, smashed back to camp, decided, well, it's going to get dark anyway, so why don't we, and we're going to have a late night, so why don't we eat some dinner and and, like, get ready for a long night. So we had some quick dinner, and we loaded up hit the Argos and like raced out to it. And by that time it was pitch black and we had a little trouble finding the moose, but it took us, you know, maybe like till we got to the area, it was like an extra 10 minutes. And then we found him, did the D got them all broke down and, and split between the two Argos. And then now we're going back. Well, this storm had socked in and it was like foggy fog, like thick ass fog. Couldn't see shit. So we had some like landmark stuff that we could normally like. You could see the silhouette of the hills you over like here. Triangulate where you're at. Yeah, and then there was this like one beacon light, like way the hell off in the distance that you could kind of see like flash. So you knew at least like that's north, that's east. You know, you could kind of like triangulate or whatever. All that was gone. So yep. I was like, oh shit. So I had 100 percent rely on electronics, and I m- went specifically off my on x line or my on x my camp and then the moose dude it took us like fucking three hours to get back we got so turned around and twisted and then the the on x kept like it would like give me some direction and then it would like spin oh because it was like i think it was the, because of the, the storm or something or mm. being socked in mm-hmm. I, I don't know for sure but it was losing like the tracking the tracking like i couldn't get back I, okay that's the problem though that anybody listening like well did you have the tracking setting on no i didn't i yeah. just had a to b okay because it wasn't that far and i just thought well we just need to get like okay to the drainage cross the drainage through those alders through another drainage and we just know like we go straight from there and we'll be at, like we'll find the trail and we can get to camp yeah, and we eventually did do that, but it just took a lot of like turning and going up and like fuck had to go back down, turn all the way back, went back toward the moose, realized we were going the wrong way, turn back mm. around and go, and I was like, you know, if I would have just used Tr- my Garmin, my Garmin di- and uh, my tracking that I normally do, which again Onyx Hunt has the tracking feature too, but in my experience using the Garmin tracking feature, it is more accurate. Like, in my opinion, it just, like... The Garmin is? Yeah, like, last year we got screwed up coming back down off the mountain when we got our yeah. ram. <clears throat> and same thing. It was, like, right before dark. Well... It, it socked in. And I was getting livid because I was trying to find... We couldn't see 15 feet. Blind. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we didn't know where our tent and stuff was. And there was no, we lost, so we were trying to do it on all electronics. And so, like, I thought when you hit that feature and that little, like, flashlight looking thing comes on, I thought that's telling me North? that uh, that's what it's telling you. Yeah. I don't need that. I want that thing. Why doesn't that thing shine the direction I'm pointing my phone? So that's why I was getting super pissed, and he had to like mm. talk me off the ledge basically because I was getting like so you guys didn't track. angry because I would have no. to walk. No, I would have to walk until it picked up my track to realize yeah. that I'm walking the wrong direction. Oh. Like it wouldn't aim me where I wanted to go because it has that little like looks like a little flashlight. Yeah, but that is just pointing north. Yeah, and I was like, it doesn't I show you it, the actual track that you laid we, we, we didn't, didn't lay we a didn't, track oh we you didn't, didn't lay a tra- track oh, oh, okay you gotcha. that's the way you got to you could see everything until the fog came in yeah no so, matter what so, man every time oh, yeah, breadcrumbs. Uh, yeah from now on you do you do breadcrumb trail but, but or just sometimes a full it track. eats up so it, much it does battery and that that's probably but i don't think it eats so much it. on the it actual garmin no you know what i'm saying no so let's say your phone dies you can still pick up that in reach and use that yeah, that one, because that battery for some reason is way better than the phone. Well, not, and he was using his inReach, and he has the big. You have the bigger inReach with yep. the yep. screen on it. Yep. So his he would just be like, "No, Chad, we got to go this way." And I was like, "I'm looking at my thing, and it's telling me different." And I'm like, "Man, I'm getting so mad at Onyx." And then, uh, you know, he he knew what was up because mm. he was using his, and and as you turned. It showed you the direction. That you, so he. Right. I was able to get at least get us going in the right direction. Yeah. And then we thought we were closer than we were. And then what I forgot is that we had to like climb up that fucking hill to where the See, camp and was. Base maps put you. Mm. When you use oh, their shit. feature, it, it's pointing to where your phone is pointing. Yes. Oh, I like oh, that. Oh, that's pretty cool. So it's. I'm and it, and that. it tells you the distance. Oh, like right now it's nine miles to Fire Island. The way the crow oh, that's flies. That's cool. Yeah, the way the crow flies. Yeah, yeah. that's dope. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna try that. So, out. is that I don't um, know a subscription who's the best. to it is, but good to have a, all of them. Shit, I don't know yeah. if I have the subscription to it or not. I can't remember if I bought it, but I really got behind on X because when they came out, like they're also doing a lot of taking their money. Mm. and putting it with them where their mouth is and they've been like working with like the rocky mountain elk foundation and this isn't this doesn't really affect us much in alaska because we don't have like landlocked public land but there's a lot of that in the lower 48 yeah especially in the west so if you're gonna branch out of here and go hunt elk in montana or colorado or whatever or just you just want to support you know the industry and the sport in general yeah they are like working with Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, the Wild Sheep Foundation, and unlocking, buying, buying private land from people as easements to get to mm. landlocked. Oh, they are. They are. Oh, I didn't know that. So Onyx has done a that's lot cool. to do that. So that's why I bought them because I I used uh, I said Strava earlier, but I meant Gaia, and Gaia okay. Gaia does everything you need to hunt up here. Honestly, some of it, their topo maps are probably better. Mm. Like, they're pretty nice. Um, like, up to date? Yeah. Yeah. But they don't have, like, you know, what unit you're in and, like, yeah. all the... They don't have the variety of maps. They're just a map. Yeah. But what their I, map is really good. Was Gaia GPS? Is that... Yeah. Okay. So, I didn't... I didn't need to switch. I didn't need Onyx, but yeah. I was like, oh, these dudes are doing good shit. Yeah. So I, what I don't like about the Garmin is it doesn't have that satellite like feature a lot of times. Or like there's a, a spot where like you zoom too far out and it just goes to that. doesn't show you any features. It just goes to like gray screen. What are you talking about, yeah. Gaia? I'm talking about in, the inReach. I think with the inReach, uh, I have oh. a mini. Yeah. So I don't really have much. There's no GPS screen. You got to access yeah. your phone for it. And I never download the maps. 
Yeah. So every time I look on it, it's just a dot on a green screen. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm like, worst. oh, well, yeah. This is, it doesn't help. Yeah, it doesn't really help. <laughs> I'm like, so if you're like trying to bounce between the three, like I have base map, and I, but I, I use base map a bunch on that Strip Creek hunt. Not that you're going to get lost, but just for like seeing how far stuff was. And like, okay, I'm in this far. If I go to this valley, how far of a pack out is that? Like, how many friends do I want to lose my relationship <laughs> with? <laughs> I'm going to help you, but this relationship is over after this. Yeah. yeah. I'll, ta- I'll take a hind quarter. I'm Don't out. call me no more. <laughs> yeah, last year, this is, we're even now. <laughs> Whatever I owed you before. Yeah, you no owe me what. now. I hope right. somebody gets that tag, man. I really want to get something out of there. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, speaking about the tags, man, I hope everyone put their... Uh, Hope everyone put their jaws in because it's a little late now. I you missed it. Late. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you did yours early. That was helpful because you sent me your list and then. I usually do it the 15th. Yeah. And you were uh, on it, dude. You were on it this time. You do it on I'm the opener? Or the, about it, oh, dude. you do it right away. I like to do no, it. No, I, I've, oh, you I've, done did, wait? After we I've talked never about done it, it early. No, after we talked about it that night, we had the little meeting. Yeah. It was like that was on a Sunday and he did it Tuesday. Oh, well, I've ne- sent one, me the screenshot. I was one, like, Damn. I've never had that little meeting <laughs> before. <laughs> so, like, if you get me excited, I'm yeah. like a puppy dog, dude. This like, guy, like, waited to the freaking I know. witching hour, dude. I, I, I'm I know, like, bro, I know. That's I'm about so... to just go in and do my own. I, I, case. I did not see that in him because he had, like, a PowerPoint <sighs> yeah. presentation <laughs> I, for I the meeting we had about it. Like, he's the most organized person I know. I, that um, was other really... than my boy, Jeremy. <laughs> That was against my normal, like, fucking G-code, man. I was, I just, like. You had a lot going on, though, man. I know, you but it just, it just, like, all of a sudden, I was like, okay, man, it's, like, two weeks out. Like, knock the shit out. You know what it is? It's very time-consuming for me because I'm partying with usually two or three other parties. Yeah. Then I got to put in for my wife and my daughter. Yeah, you're so in So it's deep. a lot of stuff to, like, go through and then, like, make sure. And when I actually had it all, like, <laughs> when I went through the file, like, okay, dad's picks, mom's picks, Kennedy's picks. Then I went into my You're picks like, and it was that's like, that's a dividend. It was like, it was like <laughs> brown bear party with Chad, sheep party with Daniel. <laughs> yeah. like, and I like do it all. Like you like, break uh, it down. So when I punch in the number and then I go, go double check to make sure the number's right. Yeah. So I don't put him for the wrong permit. Do you call fish and game and be like, Hey, can I get your bank routing number? And <laughs> I'm just going to have my depo- my dividend deposited to you guys. Yeah, get a credit in store. My ticket was $870. Oh Jesus, dude! Oh, but you God. guys, you guys put, put a dent in it because yeah. I partied with you. Well, guys. we fucked I'm up, close, man. But me and Daniel that. fucked up. I man. I didn't. I Don't forgot say that. Well, out loud. Okay. <laughs> oh wait, say it out loud and then say, "Hey, fishing game guys, you want to yeah, come no, on? Yeah, no, they should. Yeah, so us a bone, help us out. I don't think there's anything we can do. Well, I, I'm curious man. about it. and I want to call them and actually ask, or if someone listens and knows. Yeah, so we were supposed to, to do a party, which I didn't think we were going to party. So I ended up putting all my six for this caribou the tag. Car- that caribou, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we then he went part. in and partied. Uh, it should not let you. It should be like, hey. That's how I oh, feel. No, the, it will, <laughs> they, well, they they they're not going to stop dude. you from. They don't tell you like, hey, you're not eligible for anything because you didn't file your hunt reports. They will let you spend that money. And then just you won't draw anything. Now are we just yeah. not going to draw nothing, or are we no, just, no? It, just would, it would only remove no. you from that. Just okay. that species. Yeah. I double check the supplement as yeah. it reads. Okay. Specific. It will just reject that species on your on your application. Hopefully, they got some sort of a, a they're sophisticated enough that they have an algorithm that would just pick up and it would just remove three of yours. That's what it should do. That's what it should do. Whether that's Real it, said, or not, it says uh, it specifically rejects if you did what you on guys both did. sides. Yeah, I'm gonna find it so we can actually read it. It should just reject his then, or so, I don't know. It shouldn't. I think it rejects us both. Okay, I've, I got it. I got it here. Let me read it real quick. Um, read this before applying. <clears throat> Applicants may submit up to six applications, individual or party per species regardless of how many separate orders are placed applicants may apply for the same hunt more than once or multiple hunts as long as they do not exceed six applications per species if you exceed six 
all applications for that species will be rejected. Okay. So basically, we we screwed ourselves on that caribou. But the backup is the kids are going to get it. That's why I was like, you know what? Maybe the kids. Are, not to mention also. Well, I put it for that one too. Not to mention, Maybe yeah. We did those well, whole, the well, the whole idea was that if we got one, we could go sheep hunting too. Yeah. That was the whole thing about doing yeah. that hunt. Um, not to mention, I got like the full line out on, you know, flying with Meekins and the whole thing. I got it all like, I I had the conversation. I had drawn it a couple of years ago, and I was having a baby that month and my wife was like you're not doing a solo hunt like yeah. three weeks before we have a baby like that's not gonna happen <laughs> i was like well i think really? in the end there's gonna be with that? but the, we're gonna the, go we're gonna go do the hall road archery hunt and and then if the kids draw caribou like we're gonna be all right yeah trent you know put I mean? his kid into you put in for that one too yeah that caribou yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah so that's all, all six yeah yeah i'm feeling lucky this year I am too, man. I'm feeling like mm-hmm. I'm feeling like <laughs> with my luck recently, it's got to change in 2022. <laughs> I, I feel like, I feel like I'm drawing year, everything I applied for, <laughs> <laughs> like literally everything. And my wife's gonna get the chuggy X sheet. <laughs> Just a super slam draw. Like, I mean, yes. come on, like throw me a freaking Give break. Me a fucking break. Okay, so if there was one. Like, what's the number, number one? You're like, man, I, if the one, what's elk. the one? The elk is the one you want? Yeah. Number one? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, dude, I'm infatuated with a fog neck. Like, it is, yeah, that relationship to me is like, it's it's sheep hunting, but for more meat. What's yours? Man, I... <laughs> I had a toss up between. I, w- I w- if, okay, if you asked me this last year, it would have been the brown bear, the mm-hmm. Kodiak brown bear. Yeah. But I got a lot of money tied up in hides right now. So I'm like. The last thing you need is another hide. But I mean, I would love that bear tag. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, I, it's a toss up between that farewell bison and, yeah. and the elk. I, I'm going to say the elk because I need, I need redemption. Because I didn't get to go Dude. do the elk hunt last year, and that that's kind of like sticking with me, it's stinging my nostrils. Once you and guys so, do it, it'll it's just gonna be like, oh yeah, we're applying for this every. Well, and in the, the, that last well, we year's did it was, right this time, for real. And, and last year's was antlerless, which doesn't take anything away from like a, a elk hunting experience on a fog neck, whether it has horns or not. No, but. Would I love to tag an elk and also have a beautiful set of Roosevelt antlers, you know, icing on the cake? Yeah. You know well, what I mean? Well, the bull is, like I've told you, the bull is the better tag because if you if you have the cow tag, you, you have to find the herd. Right. Oh, because right. you can find a satellite lone bull. All over. Mm, all yeah. over. You're not, you might not get a toad but and that's yeah. okay i well, mean okay. it'll be a toad but you might not get the rack like they're yeah. the, the they're massive animals yeah like, they're a small I'm pretty sure they're, they're the biggest body that, their biggest heaviest elk on earth yeah yeah they have the big body small antlers I mean, versus the rocky mountain pounds. which is the other way with the big antlers smaller body my bo- my boy ian who has gone on that trip um he just got he called me and was like hey man uh can you give me the recipe for that elk heart we ate in the cabin? And I was like, recipe, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Salt and pepper. <laughs> like, that's all we had in the cabin. He's like, that's what I thought, but I just wanted to check unless you had like some special sauce somewhere. And I was like, nope, I didn't bring anything. What I put on it was in that cabin already. And he, and then he told me, he was like, yeah, my buddy got an elk in Oregon. And they're Roosevelt elk. That's where our elk came from. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I put two hind quarters in my pack don't oh, jesus and he's like and it was nothing two he's like i That's explained insane. to him that he's like i could have took the whole elk out what you got a little one i was like yeah that's because you feel like superman because you packed out 110 pounds pack five miles <sighs> i was like that's heavy he was like it's not 
they're not he's like i know they're the same species they're not the same bro oh they're not they're smaller he said yeah yeah and he and they had a bull mm. well, well that's what kind of turned me off to the partying with you last year i know you wanted the cow i don't know why you went that route well my first so I, was like, way uh, I really want i really want to, oh because there's better odds way well, well yeah I, I went off kind of chad's recommendation was like you know put in for your first choice so i did three three on the bull three on the cow and the the odds are better and i'm like well just give me a reason to go there yeah so if i yeah. got a cow it's like okay cool at least i got we're going yeah you know and that was my reason behind it yeah. but in hindsight i won't do that anymore I think if you're going to go spend the money, you're going to do that big of a trip. Like, go for the best. Go yeah. for the go, gusto. Go, go yeah. for the bull. Yeah. Yeah. Not that it's like, of course, we're going for the meat. It's not trophy. I mean, you can deal, find, but you, can, but, you get, but you need to find, like, I have yet to see satellite cows. Like, I just haven't. No, they're, I've been they're there in the herd. Three times, and they are herded up with the bull. Few bulls. Now, Joe and Brett got the bull tag. Yeah, that was the other thing too. They got a party, right? Yeah, let me yeah, they did. The yeah, so that was sick. the other thing too about that. That in hindsight, right? Like that hunt is like I, th- I think it start or opens like at the very very end of September, like the twenty fifth or something yeah. There's like that. two. There's two seasons to it. So there's yeah, the end of end of September, and I think it goes till maybe like the seventh or eighth, and then it goes and there's another one. Yeah, like later. It's a nice bull. Um, six by six, six by five. Yep, that's beautiful. Yeah, he doesn't man. have that extra horn on the left. Kind of they get side. all like white tipped on the end. Oh, uh, they're they're so they they dude. spotted they were boat hunting. Yeah, a lot of people do that. So that's how they did their trip. Um, they ended up getting like a sweet deal or something on on their on their hunt because they were going to come back and deer hunt. So I don't know the whole story behind that. I won't get into the, that, but um, I feel like it's probably more cost effective to do it the way that you guys do it. Right, Chad? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, Dude, that boat's I expensive, mean, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. How like, much they, is the boat a day? You think? I don't know what the true price is because they, they kind of got like a deal because they were coming back to go deer hunting. So I think you kind of do get those deals because a lot of those boats are like fishing boats that aren't, they're not really making money at that time unless they're doing this. Cause I know what, I think West between three West to six thousand kind of run this route too. Three to six somewhere in there. Oh, was it? Then yeah, it's definitely cheaper. I, mean, it's I did about the math 500 on that. I did the math on that. Yeah. yeah, I did the math on that. It was like going to cost everybody about a thousand dollars each. For flights, the, for the flights, yeah, yeah, it's, it's probably around that. Which I thought was like, okay, Pretty that's cheap. that's like a reasonable. Hey, me and you have a tag. Do these two other dudes want to come? It'll cost you a grand. But Obviously, we're going to share yeah. the meat, and you can deer hunt. Yeah, in, yeah. In the adventure, so if you're asking a guy to come on an adventure for a thousand dollars versus like maybe twenty five hundred, yeah, or three grand, it's like okay, that's pretty reasonable. You yeah. can burn it on a credit card, and you know what I mean? You can go. and I've heard of, you know, Nate's friends, Wes's friends, a lot of people do the, the boat deal. Yeah. And just travel around, find them, go after them. Um, I like being on the island, man. I, I'm with you. I, I, I want to do it. I'd eventually like to, to do them both. I would love to experience before it's all said and done both ways mm. but i definitely want to do it chad's way because i had brought my eight man outfitter tent from moose camp yeah. back with the intention of using it the stove i bought the two bear fences like i was all ready to rock man yeah. and like kind of you coached me up on the whole thing and i'm like dude i'm ready for this and i wanted to do i wanted to pack it out i wanted to do the whole thing yeah well even you know, on the boat you're packing it out but true you're just not like you're relying on seeing them from the boat did this dude tell me and took a winch up there yeah didn't he say that yeah like a yeah, my cousin was telling me this rope winch my cousin was telling me the same thing, thing. like they ran a rope all oh, the way really? up and just dragged the whole fucking elk right down to the beach <laughs> oh well ma- the yeah boat. maybe they're close enough that yeah. you can do yeah, that yeah yeah if they're if they're like on the on the like ridges up right b- above the beach type yeah. shit yeah it's hard to imagine like what that all like looks. That's like, just a different though. experience. That would probably be pretty nice though. Yeah. Because I'll tell you what, like when you're butchering that, 
animal and you're breaking it down like that's when it gets like jurassic kind of park feel, on feels you. hairy yeah yeah because yeah, you got like you know when your boy like you know how it is when you're breaking down an animal like everyone wants to help everyone wants to either pull on something or yeah, working a knife get their too hands dirty yep. i hate two knives in there because it terrifies me because i'm like someone's gonna get cut and these knives are like ridiculously sharp yeah so it's gonna be stitches but that's not that big of a deal but when like you look around and you see like three people's hands on the elk you're like hey man one of you is not watching for bears yeah <laughs> And that is one person's specific job. Like yeah. whoever's <laughs> holding the forty-five seventy. No, you don't. Don't even look at this animal. Just hold that. Look in the woods. Yeah, just keep paying attention. <laughs> look in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Like listen and look. What's yours? What are you most hopeful for? Um, I want that goat. I want that goat <sighs> oh, real, real, real bad. And then second would be the bison. Yeah, you're right. You know what? I, I, I want that goat, goat in that area. Goat We've been would be wanting one. To go. The elk could be two. Actually, God, I want that goat so that. bad. Yeah, so, you know what, I, 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 so I don't know if you noticed, but I put in three in one area and three in another. I did notice. But they're like same the same kinda. fucking shit. Yeah, yeah, I did notice. Okay, it was the Which same is, thing we've been doing the last couple mm-hmm. of years. And yeah, I, we've been having that on our list for a while. Yeah. I want that so bad, especially because I've been up there multiple times. Yeah, Just you know, know how there. it works, how it's going to go. It's not far. We can yeah. go down the whole thing. I want the sheep that you that you picked. I yeah, want that, that one too because it's a completely new area for me. Mm-hmm. For yeah. everyone, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. So, uh, like, that yeah. one. Well, be, I'll take whatever they give cool me, man. Shit. That would yeah. be really cool. If you're listening, uh, Mr. Lottery guy, <laughs> I'm not that picky. <laughs> Talking to the just, computer chat? Or just give me <laughs> one. Yeah, whatever. Whoever. The algorithm. <laughs> the algorithm. That's the guy. That's Elon, the guy Ma- who, Elon Musk. Who? I don't know. Who do I talk to? Bill Gates? Uh, just the algorithm guy. Who created the algorithm program? Whoever. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool to, like, see the system? Like, go into the office room fucking server whatever it is that does the thing it's just a room full of ping pong balls with names on it <laughs> that would be so awesome that'd be cool the coolest and, and it's just like one dude and his he's got like a kid like one little kid that just runs in there and grabs a ping pong ball and comes out <laughs> yeah that would be a good little we when we get one of these guys in here to explain it yeah i think they kind of hold that secretive I mean, you think you would know? I, I think it's, it's a, just a computer program. I think there's it not really a secret. But it feels it like it like, feels like there's like some, just some shit that's not talked yeah. about about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, everyone does feel like like what? Exactly why, how does the game process? guy win every time? Why does like, Steven Ranella always get drawn? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. Yeah, he does, pre- he does pretty good. He does pretty good. Um, I, w- I want to give a shout out to Emily. Real quick before we go on oh, the break. Oh, shit. Um, the award winner. Yeah, Emily went to the SCI um, Christmas banquet or whatever, and she won the New Member of the Year Award. Um, that award is given to... How about John's shoes, though? <laughs> just, oh, just rocking the... Just the slip-ons? <laughs> <laughs> With the pinstripes? <laughs> um, for inspiring new hunters. And she's one of these people that is new into the hunting game but just dove in, like, head first all out just like went after it and bro we literally talked about mule deer hunting in arizona just on a thread that i don't think anyone even realized emily was on it on that text i did because we have such so many group threads between like all of us and our friends and she just like i'm in she was like i'm in and then like she's like sends me a picture of, of a tag. bow. <laughs> like I just assumed, okay, you're in. You know this is archery, so you must have a bow. And then she's like, I got a bow at, first, at <laughs> full curl. curl the next day. I'm taking a lesson in three weeks. I was like, well, the hunt's in four. <laughs> I was like, Holy shit, Emily don't care, dude. All no. the way in, man. She got love a, it. She's like the first. Might have been the first person that got a tag. She oh one hundred oh, yeah. percent. Yeah, she might have been the first person. Oh, there's your homie right there. The the Tyler. Dude. Tyler? I, yeah, he yeah. was at the Yeah, we gotta yeah, get Tyler at the in, pipe man. night. He was yeah, at the pipe He's a night. cool dude. Yeah, I got to like talk to him for ten minutes. I didn't get a chance to really meet him too much, but he seemed like a really cool dude. Yeah, he, he is a cool dude. We're gonna get him in. He's a slope dude and but 
That's Emily, dude. Like, yeah. I've known her since she pretty like she was just a kid. Like, and I just knew her from you know family, and uh, like I knew her brother. He was a ripping snowboarder and like ridiculous on a motorcycle. And Emily is like, Emily's just that person who's like sees someone doing rad shit and she's like oh, i'm gonna do it that. and she yeah. just does it yeah there's no like i'm gonna figure out how to there's no barrier of entry for emily thompson no at all like she's like and i don't care i'm jumping yep i mean i'll go first <laughs> i mean did she she's knocked out a lot of people in mma <laughs> we didn't bring that up yeah and when she came in, but we do want to talk to her about that because she will check oh, her that's ass That's right, out. dude. <laughs> Forgot about dude, that. I remember, I remember go seeing her fights. Yeah. Emily. And she was a badass soccer player back in the day. Yeah. 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 She's just good at everything she does. Yeah. Yeah, she's in. Because you know, she goes all in. Well, all the way. And I think the, the fuel behind that is like just confidence. She's a confident woman. Yeah, and she's Very not scared confident. to learn either. She's not well, scared no. to go in there and you know, she's gonna you know learn. what it, like, you know what it is. Be, confidence, yeah. confidence is. I guess it's a few things, but she's not scared of failure, right? Mm -hmm. Right, because she's done hard, sh like she's done hard shit her whole life. Yeah, yeah. She, I mean, she's humility is not MMA like a big deal when not a lot of girls were doing that. Yeah, yeah, like she was early on in girls doing that. She's a firefighter. She's road motorcycle like she's yeah she's so not worse. afraid Hardcore. of mm -hmm. failing and that's that that is what confidence is like so many people are just scared of like the embarrassment of not yeah. being good at something emily don't care no even the simple like which is not simple but like just taking her own boat out into prince william sound like that's daunting to me like i'm yeah. like i'm not going yeah. unless someone that, that knows what the fuck they're doing mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. that's life or death out there Oh, absolutely. You know, and she's like going with her three girlfriends. <laughs> and killing bears. Yeah. yeah. Killing bears, skinning them out, breaking them down, bringing them home, making sausage. She has that uh, like dude mentality of like, I'll figure it out when I get to it. Like, yeah. I don't need to know it all. I'll just figure it out when I get there. Yeah. So she definitely deserved the award. Congratulations. Yeah, to, that's uh, awesome for her, man. To her. Yep. Um, I need another cold shot, so we will be right Let's do it. back. The Treehouse AK, your one-stop dispensary located at 341 Boniface Parkway. Be sure to ask the bud tender about their deal of the day, because honestly, there's always something good on deck. And guys, listen, this is where the culture lives. At the Treehouse, their dedication to servicing consumers has been developed through a lifetime of involvement in the cannabis culture. They're committed to providing the highest quality products at whatever value your budget affords, while always maintaining the deep-rooted principles that have carried them this far. Their focus is on relationships over transactions, and you can always depend on them to treat you with the respect you deserve. Hit them up at thetreehouseak.com, and remember, you must be 21 years of age to enter their store. Tailored Restoration, 24-hour emergency home services, helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Tailored has an emergency response number with trained professionals available to help you at any time, day or night. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Make an appointment today at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Since 2008, Serrano's is Anchorage's own new generation of Old Cocina. Their menu showcases the passion and love of their rich heritage and unique family recipes that have been passed down through the generations. Serrano's goal is to embrace and display trad flavors using the best ingredients that are available. They focus on making everything from scratch daily. In-house menu includes handcrafted corn tortillas, salsas, carne asada, and chorizo. But don't take their word for it. Experience their tradition and some bore for yourself. Locations on Tudor and Northern Lights, both with new tequila bars. Check out their daily specials at serranosmexicangrill.com. The Connoisseur Lounge, located in the heart of Palmer, Alaska. The Connoisseur Lounge is Palmer's first locally owned and operated cannabis retailer. Their beautiful store is located at 226 Evergreen Avenue. The Connoisseur Lounge has exclusive cannabis products such as Snowcap Romance, Aurora Haze, Super Glue, and one of our favorites, Sugar Cookies. 
And if you're not into the flower, the connoisseur can hook you up with edibles, vape supplies, and a ton of CBD options for all your health and inflammation needs. Check out their daily deals at theconnoisseurlounge.net, or even better, stop by the lounge today. Remember, you must be 21 years of age to enter their store. And uh, we watched that... uh I don't know if you guys seen that documentary on the volcano and just watched it last night. Just watched it last night. I think it might have just come out. Fuck, man. Rena came across it and Heavy. we're getting ready to, we're getting ready to put the kids to bed. What is it? I haven't seen it. It's called Volcano or The <laughs> Volcano? Yeah. Oh, it's and it's the, the 2019 yeah, 2019. 2019 like tragedy in New Zealand White Island. The oh. like most active volcano in the world. It's like a tourist thing they take people out there look in the crater. Yeah, they take, like, boats and helicopters will fly in there. It erupted. Uh, until 2019, it's closed to public yeah. now because it killed 22 people. I didn't hear about that. But if, if for anybody listening, if you haven't seen it, like, uh, check it out because it's humbling. It's sad. Like, I brought tears to my eyes. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm, 100%. In, I'm in tune with my emotions, and, and that, like, broke my heart. 100%. When they showed the list and it was, like, Three of the same last name, four of the same last name. Well, that kid, oh, man. Families. Yeah, like that do, kid. Oh, with his parents, he had and to leave his sister. <sighs> they never even found her. And then the helicopter pilot was like the only one who didn't get hurt. That's crazy. The only one that made it to the water and jumped in the water. <laughs> oh my it's gosh, wild, right? that's terrible. That's so crazy. crazy. Yeah. Anyway, they they just take like boat tours out Caribbean. <clears throat> you know, the ship will come in. They'll, they do like Australia to New Zealand, New Zealand, and then one of the like activities is like jump on a boat, and go, go out, yeah, ninety minute ride, put a hard hat on, grab your camera, walk to the edge, look at the acid I'm, lake. I mean, it's steam unbelievably and beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> so the cool. sulfur has made like this like gold and bright green. Neon green. Then the like acid lake is like blue, like. Bahamas like blue, looking, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's unreal. Like, the footage that people had of it is unreal. And then, kaboom! It's so, like so it's erupted one, like three. Is it lava every three or is years? It just like ash? And no, ice. it's ash it's and eruption. steam. Yeah, steam. Yeah, not ash and lava. steam, not lava. They tell you what kind. It's a different kind of volcano than Hawaii. Mm. Hawaii's lava. Yeah, it's not volcanic. I forget, like I forget what they call it. But magma. It's like gas. Yeah, it's to show the way it like builds up like down deep and then it mm -hmm. just like releases gas and so it was like one boat went and their crew went checked it out jumped back on the boat we're on their way out and then the other boat with the people were went to the crater we're on their way back and then a helicopter landed with some people and they were on their way they were there yeah. and then it, it went off and so the people on the boat were like they saw it erupt and then they went back to shore to try and help, and then they were able to get. Well, they pinned it first, and were running yeah, from away the cloud. From it. Yeah, because they were watching it, and then they were like, you know, it's like the footage you see of the, someone watching an avalanche, and then it's kind of like, oh look at that, it's so crazy. And then it's like, That's oh cool. shit, it's getting close. And then, so like they start running oh, yeah, away, so the and then with they like turn 40 around. People and like pins it, back. then turn back, and they go into the bay where. You know, they, they kind of, like, stage up and then... Try to help people. Try to pull all these people on their fucking just burnt. Oh, my burnt. God. Steam. Steam burns. Or steam burns. Yeah. Burns. Yeah. Steam, so clothes didn't help you. Yeah. Just yeah, like, if you wore clothes... It was, like, cooking you it through it. Burnt, yeah, cooked you, burnt your skin through your clothes. Like, didn't burn your clothes. The only places you through. were protected is, like, the couple that, like, he was <sighs> holding her wrists. So, like... His, the the wife his was hand print is like the only. No, the wife was holding his wrist. Yeah. And that's the only unburnt spot on it's his the arm. the only like wow. real skin on his arm. Oh my God. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I we, we did some research on it today. Um, Rena did, and she was like, there's like lawsuits and. Oh, I'm sure. They didn't mention any of it on the video because I was wondering. I was like, oh, I could tell the there's one a lot couple. Of implying on like, the, like, well, if I would have known or I would have made an informed yeah. decision. And it was like. You signed three pieces of paper that were release forms, though. Yeah. And they were like, what's your next of kin? And I'm like, I kind of feel like those were like waivers. Yeah. In my in my opinion, not the rabbit hole too much on this, but like, I kind of feel like that was right along the lines of like skydiving, bungee Skiing. jumping. Like anything extreme that's like risky, 
Like human skiing. You, just you read like the back of your lift up. ticket. It says there are inherent dangers that can result in serious injury or death. Yeah. Yep. So, so I always, and maybe I'm just old school, and my wife would probably say that I can be an asshole. So I, I always have a problem with lawsuits in those situations, man. Yeah. Unless somebody did something wrong. Yeah, I, you know? I when I found like, that out, I was kind, I was kind of like offended, yeah. and kind of pissed. It's but a, I also didn't go through what no, they went through. One hundred percent, and I do have empathy for it. But absolutely, and maybe I mean, maybe you didn't get it, like you didn't understand the risk, and maybe maybe they made some miscalculations and they shouldn't have been there that day. But I'm to sure me, it's like if that. you go skydiving and you get injured because the chute malfunctioned, like that, like you took that risk. Yeah. Now, if you jumped out of the plane and like the dude didn't hook you to him and you fell and there's no <laughs> shoot and you lived or your family sued, like I get that. Yeah. Like that's yeah. negligence. But this is like you signed up. Well, on a tour guide that had done it like 1,100 times. So he, he had guided to the damn crater 1,100 times. Yeah. No, it was and his 1,100th and 11. Right. That trip. One, 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 one. Yeah. And kind of crazy. Yeah. And it was like, and they had like footage of it, like exploding. Yeah. Like at night. Yeah. It was always like at night when there wasn't people on it. So yeah. it was always like the timing was always perfect. Yeah. That it like had activity when no one was on it. Every it three just years. Happened. A little risky business. Yeah. 2013, that, that, 2016. And, and they were there December, 2019. 9th, December 9th. Mm. Yep. That's where That's I was just nature, like, I was man. a little pissed off. Like, I kind of feel like. I don't know if they'll win anything, man. New Zealand, Australia, they got a lot of. Cra I mean, they were the ones who invented bungee jumping. Like, you know, they have a. I mean, I think there's a lot of rules in Australia these days. Like, Australia is kind of a lot different than it used to be. Mm -hmm. A lot of rules there now, but. Yeah. Anyway, since they came just... and took everyone's guns, the New Zealand is still Wild West. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like it just it's it's right on the chain, the 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 ring of fire, man. Like it's active. It's volcanoes and earthquakes and yeah, you know, it's just not a it's an unstable like Hawaii or you know, yeah, the Pacific Coast. You know, it's, it's just a, what it is. It's a struggle with those type of things. Yeah, uh, my feelings on it. Like, you should check it out though, D. It's, I will. Yeah, watch it tonight. It's, it's, it's it was really great. good. I'm gonna heat up a little hot tea. Ooh, in the new mug? In the new Upper Huffman mug that we got on the website. Damn, that's a beautiful picture of it. Yeah, it came out really good, guys. So we got some new uh, coffee mugs, Upper Huffman ones. We got some Alaska Wild Project ones. Um, go ahead and get you some of that. We also have, we just got them in. They should be on the site by the time you guys um, listen to this. We have the new Alaska Wild Project uh, beanie, black patch, the original black and white patch on the black Carhartt style beanie. Um, so all the uh, young kids out there get you some. Their petition. I don't know if it's petitioning. It's probably the wrong. They're because uh, we got all the snow in Anchorage. Didn't so we? they're uh, the <laughs> oh the snow open machine. for snow machining. Yeah, I heard that they're trying to get Peters Creek like the whole Chugach range. So it's gotta be so you can snow. actually go to the, Upper the snow machine. You don't gotta just lie about it yeah what, wasn't that always like a thing like they would it would like a profman's open yeah and it was like for an hour that's where that, the whole thing came from <laughs> it's like what the fuck it's like man? it doesn't really open anymore for snow machining it used to back in the day mm -hmm. like you know i heard you guys talking on the last podcast about how you were telling your kids like nah man this is how it always was like yeah. when i was a kid yeah. we always shoveled like this yeah it's normal right like you yeah. shovel like you made, i made a lot of money in the high school era, like shoveling roofs. Yeah. Oh yeah. When was the last time anyone had to shovel roofs in Anchorage? I mean, a few years ago when we had that, what we get two hundred inches in Anchorage, that was like a record. I think we broke a record. Yeah. For like the whole year, there was some people shoveling, but that was common when we were kids. I feel like. Oh, 100 percent. So yeah, so it used that. to be open. So now it's it's kind of why it's like. The running joke of like you just tell people. Yeah. Have you gone riding? How is it? I know my brother and them went a couple gone times. Yet. Where'd they go ride? Camel? I, I don't know. No. 
No, I don't. I didn't ask. Do you think Polaris Snow Machine Company listens to this podcast? Because I got some shit to say to you. <laughs> you still got that thing? Yeah, I'm selling it because my new one. I just, I just yesterday got finally my new one shipped. But yeah, my. Did you um, go back to Skidoo? Nope. Nope, I love the platform. I, I'm, I, but I did get. Um, I just got a non-boosted one. Actually. You know, Olsnack was pretty butthurt about that. Olsnack's butthurt about a lot of stuff. I do. <laughs> He's like, you fucking traitor. I don't think he, he said you'll be said back. That, nah, he wouldn't say that. He said you'll be back. He did that. He did not say that. He, I could be back. <laughs> he knows I, I've never been brand. I'm not that. I'm not that dude that gets like Ford tattooed on his ass. I don't do that. <laughs> Like I'm whoever is building the you, best stuff. Still, then I'm still riding. Wear it. the 1988 yeah. checkered flag. Yeah, I'm hot not pink green. I'm not cat riding jacket. only Burton snowboards. <laughs> only this boot. I've never been that guy. Like whatever is the. I love free markets. I love competition. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. I like a Big Mac. When are you gonna go ride? Like oh, now you just got the machine, so you're gonna go ride. Oh wow. No, I haven't got it yet. But my machine. Polaris has like three stop ride recalls, man. Oh, really? On the last year's model? Literally telling you, like, can't even ride it. Don't even start it. No way. Oh, yeah. That sucks. It's kind of a bummer. And I I think it's... Wait, so you snow checked another one? Yeah. Because they came out with... Non-turbo? Yeah. I went... Because they were coming out with a... Basically, a big bore 850, a 900. So they built what was called the 9R. So I went in to check a 9R because I was like, well, if I can get the same horsepower as the Boost without a tur- without the weight of a turbo, I would do that because we we don't like we don't you don't ride at a lot of elevation in Alaska. So like guys in Colorado, they need turbos. Yeah, totally. Because you're at 10,000 feet and your snow machine has. 165 horsepower at sea level that thing has like 110 horsepower at 11,000 feet maybe mm-hmm. so they're never really running full power like but we ride like i mean four, parking five, lot four, at five, turning in is thousand feet you're rarely hitting five thousand here yeah never five thousand would be like arctic man <laughs> some spots mm-hmm. and like you know, you can get the five thousand, but most of the time you're riding yeah, between like 3, fifteen feet. and three thousand. Yeah, that's plenty of horsepower. The turbo, it's unreal. I will say that. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I don't know. Hmm. Just went with a regular, not naturally aspirated. I keep the turbos in my truck though. I'm not going back from that. <laughs> oh, that thing! I was going to say that earlier when you brought up the uh, haul road hunt. Oh yeah. I'm dialed for it. You ready? Okay. Truck's right. dialed, bro. Perfect. Right. That's what we need here. We're good. New suspension. Let's do it. All the way around. Yeah, let's get that thing muddy. That's our, mm. Tuned. That's our boy. Tuned. Yeah. We're right. ready. Chad, we should take your truck. <laughs> oh, we, yeah. Yeah, you think. You got think the big cab and a canopy. Yep, yep. Do what I mean. Fuel efficient. We'll okay. have to bring it to a fuel. You've all, you didn't fuel. drive it ever, did you? You I have never driven. You haven't it. driven yet. Okay. I didn't want to drive my truck, man. I'd like, I'd have mm. to get some new tires or some shit for it. Three quarter yeah. ton. Oh, like You're getting beat up and beat that. up. Actually, we took Cisco's three quarter ton Ram, but it was smooth. He's got a Cummins. You guys he, are he brave goes, taking a Ram on a bumpy road. But he was going like, <laughs> you know, shit's falling off of that, dude. He was going like, fuck, dude. He was hauling. Oh, ass. he was flying. Like, like when you go 80, bumps. you're just floating was, over all those bumps. Oh, dude, we'll be doing <laughs> that in my truck. <laughs> Remember when we almost this new, I'm impressed with this new suspension. I'm, I'm stoked. Plus, Actually, I put Deaver Springs on it, too. So, like, rear suspension, unreal now. The Deaver Springs, I, I've never run them on anything. Man, I can't believe it. Like, a leaf spring makes that big of a difference. We're going to jump that motherfucker or what? Sell it. Hey, man, they <laughs> said, the, sh- the guy who it. built the shock said that you could. He's like, send you can, it. these things are built for, send it. Okay. All right. Remember when we'll Cisco almost sent us off Hurricane Gulch, though? Yeah. Oh, just. You were sleeping. You're like. What happened on oh, Hurricane? Oh, man. It was like pouring rain. And when you hit that Hurricane Gulch, it's like a drop. And it's like a different type of, obviously, material. And he just kind of hit it sideways and just was like. 
just back and forth and da, 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 I just wake up like you're looking, looking at that guardrail going oh, that my. doesn't look that strong no <laughs> it was it was definitely like a, a like a borderline life flash before your eyes kind of moment because it was yeah, like you're not surviving so it. subtle and but it was like whoa what just happened because it was like that it was only for a second but it was like it was a hard tr- yeah like his truck caught air and then like hit the bridge that had water on it yeah so it like hydroplaned at the same time yeah. so we're like whoosh, and his truck and, just and it's a dodge and so he was you're and, terrified and he was yeah and he was he was easily going 80 <laughs> like he was going so yeah, fast flying and uh yeah um, we used, to <laughs> used to bungee jump off that bridge did they we used to yeah really that's the one to do it really for. Yeah, and I I just how do you get, get back over up? Bridge as fast as I can. Yeah, you hike. Well, you hike back up. They just lower you all the way down. Yeah, we used to. We had the company that did it. Oh, Billy's brother. We started at Big Lake in the hot air balloon. Mm-hmm. But the FAA shut us down because no one had a hot air balloon license. <laughs> we just bought a hot air balloon <laughs> and bungees, <laughs> and we were. It was to a boat, you know, like. Well, you don't mm. need to know how to fly it. You only need to Just make it go up. It's tied. The yeah, boat yeah. pulls it back down and lands it in the same spot. So he got shut down. And then can we you decided. Please sign this waiver. We decided, oh, man. Bro, I can tell you stories. <laughs> I'm ready for him. <laughs> I'll just tell you next one. Time we get, next time we get stuck in a tent together, I want to hear all about it. I'll tell you one right now. We had, we had these two guys that were like army rangers and they were driving from anchorage to fairbanks to report and they stopped because they saw us jumping they're not like, hurricane Gulch? yeah they're like how much to do this and we're like this much they're like oh we don't really got you know we're just army guys like you guys what are you guys like, army ranger I'm like all right worked them a deal like two for one or something and uh Man, I'm not going to tell the details of how this came this way, but because that's not a good story for that guy. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so the the rigging that we had was a regular climbing harness. So like your waist. And then uh, so people didn't get whipped and hit with the bungee. You had a chest harness. And those two carabiner together, and then the carabiner from the bungee went to the two carabiners. So you were supported, and when you were hanging, you weren't hanging like feet down. You were just hanging like looking straight up, like on your oh, okay on your back. Well, uh, I was my job with them was like doing hooking people up because I had rock climbing experience and rope experience, and uh, so Brian Chef had me doing that and then uh i got pulled off that for a reason that's really dumb and so the guy who was financing this whole thing was uh he was like hooking up the person who went before this guy and he just continued so this guy jumps and i see him hanging like vertical and uh, Rob Wigan, my buddy Rob, was on the bottom. We had radios, you know, because we'd lower him down to Rob. Okay. He'd be like, okay, oh, okay. He, I got him, okay. and we'd stop. Yeah. And we just had the rope, like, running through the guardrail, and then we could lower him down. It's like three square tubes, the guardrail on that thing. So we lower, we're lowering this guy down, and Rob calls up on the radio, and he's like, hey, man, this dude is dripping blood all over me. Oh, and I'm shit. like, hey, dude, squat. <laughs> what uh don't repeat just stop talking and uh lower him down this guy hikes up and uh the dude who hooked him up who took my job from me only hooked up his chest harness like he didn't hit the other carabiner so when this guy jumped the thing whipped him it only like had he not been an army ranger like he could have easily just if he put his arm straight up, he was slipped oh, he out of the slipped out of it. Oh my he would have come God. right out. And the carabiner hit him in his lip and split his bottom lip. Like, like if you were to hold your lip out and someone just walked up with a razor blade and was like, blew it right. Like open. his whole lip, all of it was split. Like down, you could see his teeth. Oh my God! And he came up and <laughs> he's got like his t-shirt taken off and he's holding it over his mouth. 
And I was like, man, are you all right? He's like, I'll be all right. I'll put some stitches. He was like, country boy. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no worries. I'm He's good. like, I'll put some stitches in this. My buddy jumped yet. I want to film it. And I was like, oh, my God. How how are we avoiding a lot? This dude is like, I don't know what I did wrong, but must have done something wrong. Like, <laughs> no, you didn't. We almost killed you. Oh, my God. That was crazy, dude. Did his buddy I mean, jump I mean, there? We were in high school. Yeah, did his buddy go? Oh, yeah. Buddy jump. Got a, did, you, did you hook him up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, you're done. You go, no back, go back over there and sit in your Porsche. <laughs> so he drove. We'll handle the adult shit. <laughs> As I'm like 17, yeah, maybe. Yeah, get 16, out of here. Let 17. me go and hook this one up. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, the last show we had, Julia O'Malley. Thanks for her for coming out. But we were talking about locks and the oh, yeah. knife that you use um, to cut that thinly sliced locks. And uh, we had Ira Edwards, who's been on the show before. Really, really awesome dude. Um, he came with the chat. Um, first of all, he's doing this big horse gajoring thing coming up. And um, for people that don't know. Where are he, they doing that? Jackson Hole? I think they're doing it here. Oh, that he's holding He's going to do an event in Alaska. Yeah. Oh, that's a big thing in Jackson. Yeah, I think they're doing it here. What and he's going to be one of the guys. Horse gajoring. It's basically, you know, the same as being put, put toe behind it's a. Uh, Arctic man, but the snow machine is a horse. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So anyway, he 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 chimed in and he and he sent me oh, the link what? for the for the knife for the locks. Oh yeah. Um, the website is Victor and Ox. Victor and Ox. Victor and Ox. V i c t o r i n o x. It's just Victor Knox. You could probably get that at Butcher Supply. There's an I there. Victor and Ox. I know, but I think it's just pronounced Victor Knox. Yeah, Victor Knox. Eric uses the shit out of those knives for halibut. Um, and those are major halibut guide knives. Wood salmon knife. It's called. Sweet. Um, so I sent that back. Cut. Yep, get that really thin, thin slice. So I wanted to thank him for uh, for uh, talking to us and let us nice. know. I'd be that. willing to bet you don't even have to order it. You could probably go to Butcher Supply in Mountain View and get that knife. They carry full line of Victor now. Oh, they do. Yep. Okay. That's what I. That's run. where I've seen that. Yeah, I run I've that seen that before. Oh, you run that for your fillet knife? Mm -hmm. The black handle with well, the curve or the white? White handles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's right. You did bring that out when we did the. Uh, yeah, I have a new one now. Ceviche. Did you bring that when we did the ceviche? Yeah, yeah, yep. I got a lot of views, a lot of haters, a lot of lovers, a lot of haters. Lot, where are the haters? Oh, you're gonna get worms. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. You gotta freeze it first. Yeah. You're gonna be worms. Good luck with the worms. You're never gonna get like all positive feedback. No, nah, dude. When you get hundreds and hundreds of thousand people, are you like, how would you know? You don't even have salmon in Minnesota. Yeah, they're yeah. like Breckenridge, we eat, wherever you're from. What are you talking we about? Eat Come pink on, salmon man. out of Lake Michigan, okay? Yeah, <laughs> can can comes in the jar, comes in a can. No, no, offense, no offense to you, Midwesterners. I've you heard you that you're supposed to freeze it before you do sushi, but it's ceviche. It's cooked. Yeah, whatever. We're still here. It's cooked. Oh, in the we're juice. still here, and we'll probably yeah, still do it again. And again. That's what people think. That's the thing. That's the misconception. It's not raw. It's cooked in yeah. citric acid. Yeah. It's not sushi. Anyway, don't do it if you don't want to, but we're going to continue to do it. Yep. Right um, another thing I wanted to bring up from the last podcast, I misspoke. Um, we had talked about the whaling and the whaling numbers. Oh. And I had said thousands and thousands and thousands <laughs> of whales had been killed. Was I wrong? <laughs> so I went and looked it up, and I found the number from just – the 1900s, just from 1900 to now to 1985 when they banned it. Okay, researchers estimate that between 1900 and 1999, 2.9 million whales were killed by the whaling industry. 276,000 in North Atlantic, 563,000 in the North Pacific, and two million in the Southern Hemisphere. That's China. Uh, that's like South America. Yeah, but the South Americans yeah. ain't killing those whales. I think that's the Chinese. Oh, they like go like down. when you see the what's the <laughs> what's the boat that's always ramming those whaling boats? Oh yeah, the, that's uh, always Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, yeah, Antarctica areas. Oh, like, like the whale whale wars or whatever. Yeah, that. that's always yeah. that's all. South, what was that boat South, called? Southern the whale Hemisphere. Explorer, the uh, Freedom Fighter, the something like that. Uh, that was always 
The green peas. It started out as like green peas guys. Like, <laughs> like their team was so suited and booted to go to battle, but they didn't. It's like they were just throwing water balloons at the wheeling boats. Like they were never. Yeah, they'd have like those water. It looked like they were really ready to go. Like some shit was gonna go down. Oh yeah, they're like and, and then, tactical cooled out. Then they were like, yeah, just. <laughs> yeah. Well, they tried, and I'm sure they. I mean, and kudos to them for like. For oh their man, cause. they stopped I mean, a lot of it. They caused. They. they I mean, they. Yeah. they really put disrupted a, a lot of the some hunts. damage in that industry for sure. Yeah, like it just was just like. Well, it's just crazy know, that, that many. I mean, I guess they weren't on the bow with the 50 cal, like, dot, 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 I know, you know that. I asked about this when I was working in Barrow. And the, uh, we were there, like, the ice was opening up enough that I was able to, like, swim in the Arctic Ocean, which was cool to say I've done. And uh, their whaling was, like, they were preparing for it. But I didn't get to see it. We were gone before it happened. But kind of just talked with some locals about it and how, how it works and it's like an international whaling commission that decides the numbers that can be harvested. And then yeah. that is split like throughout the entire like Northern community from mm -hmm. like Greenland, Norway, all of it. Yep. And uh, Alaska got like, they get their it was a, it was a pretty low number. Like, I feel like it I was like they, 29 think, total. Yep. That Something like that. Ready. It is really, yeah. really low. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. very, it was very low. But after reading that article, I think it was Scientific American. I should be specific two, about 2. that. Two point nine million. You so think? you guessed, well, but that way was low. Yeah, but that was only from nineteen hundred. Like whaling was huge, also like in the eighteen hundreds. Like, oh, but they just didn't have what any were tracking. they doing with it then? Like they were the using oil. They're using it for oil. Yeah. Oil. Well, they're using it for a lot of things. They're using it for oil. Um, they were using um, like the baleen and stuff for like corsets and stuff like that. They were using all the whale. They were using all that stuff. They were. Yeah. Because I know when, it, whenever we've historically had those industries for money, like they didn't use a lot of stuff. Like yeah. with buffalo, they weren't using shit. Oh no! Well, that no. was the other example they had <laughs> was tongues. was the buffalo was the other species that was like demolished in the millions like that. And you see the, those photos of like the s buffalo skulls stacked up? It's insane. Oh yeah, yeah dude. Or the, car the carcasses balls just laying. Yeah, all over. over uh, as far as I can see. Yeah. And the other one was the carrier pigeon, which I didn't know. They got demolished? Yep. For harvest? Um, the other book that I'll mention that's really, if you want to learn more about the whaling thing, and this is like super inter interesting, it's called uh, Levithian, L-E-V-I-A-T-H-A-N, and it's the history of whaling in America. Um, it's amazing. That's an amazing book. What's they it go. Called? What's it called? Leviathan. Leviathan. Can you spell from? L e v i a. Leviathan. T h n. Leviathan. Maybe a Leviathan. And it's the history of uh, whaling in America by <laughs> Eric J. <coughs> Dolan. I think that's a D. That one's really good. Huh. And that goes into detail, like. Like Nantucket, all of it, the dude. whole thing. All of it, dude. Yeah. All of it. Yeah, that's a that's a that's an excellent. Thanks book. for clarifying. That's that's crazy numbers. That's a hundred years we killed almost three million whales. Well, it just goes to Humans. show, and then they continued in the article. It just goes to show like what the what the ocean could sustain now. Like it could have like millions and millions of whales in there. Mm. Yeah, you know, which is pretty crazy. But the human race wiped them out. And those are just numbers that were reported. Imagine the numbers that aren't reported. The human virus. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know? Um, I also want to give a quick thanks um, to uh, Kyle from uh, the Young Guides podcast. Um, the Young Guides podcast is a, a podcast from Kyle and Keaton. Um, Kyle's a guide up here for Bear Paw River Guides, I want to say, up on the Willow and some other spots, and he does a lot of ice fishing and stuff like that. Um, we were talking with Oliver on the um on the show that oliver was on about my kids uh science experiment he wants to do um you know my kid's super into fishing and yeah. he's all his science stuff experiments that has to do with fishing what does he want to do so he wants to teach himself um how to fly t how to tie flies 
and then what the process is. And so I have no idea. I've never done that. So yeah. Kyle reached out after listening to the podcast and was like, hey, I'm into that. I could show you guys. You guys can come over. I got mm. the stuff. I was like, awesome. That's Thank you so much. I told yeah. my kid. He's he was so happy. And then I got another email from a he guy. He can make money, man. Tell him to tie yeah. up a million cohos and sell them. Yeah. No, we're going to. So we're going to get into that here during Christmas break. And then another dude, because we're going to go buy the stuff. You know, I was like, well, well let's go to homie's um, place and learn and see what we need and then go buy all the stuff and we'll start yeah. doing it in the garage or in the house. And then another dude, uh, Frank Schultz, um, shout out to him, big listener too from Fairbanks, was like, hey, I have all this stuff I never use. I have all the equipment and I'm just going to send it to you so you can give it to your kid. Oh, oh dude, no. how awesome is that? Yeah. That's perfect. Just shot us an email. Was like, hey, I heard about that. I'd rather some kid use it than than me just having it sitting here. Or yeah, throwing it away or or whatever. Sell it to somebody. That's awesome. So, man, thank you to you guys, the community out there. Um, My son is super stoked and says thank you to you guys um, for helping him out with all that stuff. Because we're going in blind. I was just gonna go to. I can't wait until he catches his first fish on a fly he tied. Oh, that's it. I mean, he's already addicted. But now it's like that's gonna be a whole nother level. I didn't think about the cohos. That would be because, yeah, they're a dollar each. Yeah, that's like the most common. Yeah, fly that is a good one up here. You know. Yeah. Do you have to use that like shitty ass hook, like mandatory? Uh, yeah, yeah uh, it's, the, well, it's a it's measurement, the three eighths of an inch. Yeah. Could you just like use that that measurement, but like with a gami or like yeah, a you can like real. Yeah, you hook? can use whatever hook. You don't have to use like that straight, but it has Dollar to. It has hook. to have. I think three inch, in three. I believe it's three eighths of an inch, or less in between the shank and the tip. Mm. I c- don't go fishing with that without checking that first, listeners. I, I mean, there's wrong. a lot of there's a but lot I believe of it. I know I, it's got to be close to three eighths. That have them like to spec. They are to spec, and whatever the yeah. line or like. I mean, I don't run cohos. I run a. Kamigatsu and a piece of yarn because the yarn's required just within that number yeah but yeah. you have to keep that um yeah yeah the yarn is required do. something has to be on there it can't, can't be a bear a, hook can't be a bear hook mm-hmm. oh okay well i won't say names well <laughs> thing slices through the water real good though doesn't it yeah, <laughs> yeah you just gotta, that floss, you that floss sound yarn on there. yeah the old floss i can't wait to floss <laughs> um I was going to say, oh, yeah, I had, um, we do a lot of fires in our house. Like, um, I just had a bunch of firewood delivered, and I've actually been using that good Mormon wood in the house. (laughs) Really? Um, Yeah, because I was like. It's clean, man. It is clean, and that's why I started using it, because before I would use, I would use the spruce. (laughs) The Mormon wood. (laughs) I would go get, like, the spruce, and I like to burn birch and all that. Hold on. Hold on. (laughs) Somebody's got to let me. What? (laughs) The Mormon wood? Yes, what's the good <laughs> good mark? Like when you said it, it sounds yeah, like a brand, bro. Is that a brand a, or is this a, like a dude you know? It's, it's a porno. <laughs> like you're like, let me get that it's good that, Mormon wood. It's that like that sounds like a brand, the good Mormon. <laughs> I mean, it does sound like. Is that not is. a brand? This is a guy you know no, it's, who's a Mormon it's that, and it's gave you guys Utah, wood. It's a Utah wood, man. So they sell the wood in boxes at Sportsman Warehouse. And it's from Utah, and I just been calling it the Mormon wood. <laughs> oh, but it's like edit, so edit, perfectly, edit. it's so know, perfectly know, like hit the cancel button before you get canceled. <laughs> oh, that's so. Funny. But it is like, it's so cut, clean, cut. and whatever that wood oh, is, that's what you had at uh, three hundred and sixty. Yeah, 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 sure yeah. Is. Okay. yeah, yeah. Yep. It's like really dense. It burns really good, yeah. and it doesn't pop like crazy, it like seems like spruce will. So sappy. non-Alaskan to yeah, burn. Not sappy. Some like fucking shipped in yeah wood from another You're like state. buying atlantic salmon yeah, <laughs> the re- yeah. i mean it is like Alaska. that but it's proven it's always dry yeah it's always perfect they got big pieces little pieces in there and it's it i've come to find because so it's dangerous you're making a fire in your house you know what i'm saying and you get oh. you get it popping if you're burning spruce and sometimes absolutely all that really sap dry. Is exactly out. so i started burning that wood Speaking to, um, I had a guy come. We had like a crack, a couple cracks in the fireplace. And we have just a traditional fireplace. You put wood in there. Um, and so I got to talking to the dude about the wood and all that. And he's like, yeah, you want 
to burn this kind or, you know, birch or spruce not because, I mean, yeah, it'll pop out and just catch the couch on fire or something, and then there you go. <laughs> you so I started buying that wood specifically for the house. Yeah. So I'll start it with one of those, like, dura logs, and that'll go for whatever, like, two hours or whatever, and then I'll start putting on the Mormon wood. And I had the guy come <laughs> fix it, and he got to telling me about... He's a, he, you want to talk about you want to talk about my ceviche got some fucking oh, haters. Man. Wait till this one comes out. Hey, hold, on. Oh, hold on, hold on. We're supporting Alaska the church, Wild man. Project founder <laughs> uses a duralog <laughs> and wood from out of state. From Utah. <laughs> I'm saving all the good wood, the Alaska wood I for the fire it. outside. Yeah, I, I can tell you any any mofo that wants to talk shit about that wood, go buy a box and. Try it out. I feel like I remember. I remember being out there, and you had that, and you were telling me about about it. And I, I remember, and I don't know if it was Everybody like on Shark Tank or Everybody something, but I saw a thing somewhere about this guy who does it come with like Tinder and like some kindling. It, it's like the. No, I know what you're talking about, that but guy, not that guy, but it's similar to that. that. I think was, this guy got the idea from these guys. That guy was making a fortune, like, selling those to, like, like premium Airbnb and hotels uh-huh. that had fireplaces mm-hmm. in their places. And, like, you walked in and you had, like, your firewood, your tinder, like, everything to start a fire if yep. you were from yeah. New York and had never started a fire yeah. in your yeah, life. Yeah, the box has, like, kindling cut. Like, it has the logs, but it has, like, half a dozen, like, thin strips. Yeah. Because it's, like, has to fit cubically in that box perfect. Yeah. And you, the so logs are So, they're using that to fill the gaps. Yeah, so in the corner, like, when you pull all the logs mm-hmm. out, in the bottom corner will have that, like, yeah. little split Couple stuff. Couple of strips. You can grab a fucking, filling all the gaps with yep, the strips. You can grab a yeah. hatch and just, like. And it is dry. How many times have you, like, last minute pulled into the Talkeetna or wherever and grabbed that wet wood and yeah. you're just like, ah. Or they don't have any. Or they don't have any. You forgot it, and you're like, ah, shit. So that Mormon wood is just perfect, dude. Well, you don't bring, like, eight boxes on a camping trip if you want to have a bonfire all night. You just bring, like, one or two boxes. Yeah. And that box gets your fire hot. Then you can start throwing wet. Or or maybe, like, you have, like, you got a cord at home. It's probably better coals, too, for cooking and stuff. Totally. It's great. Yeah. It's so so clean. It's like hardwood. It's good for it's good for cooking, but it's what I like it the most for is to start my fire. Because most of the firewood that we get, we go down to, you know, Randy Hahn's best firewood and go get a cord and throw it in the back of your truck. Half the shit's still got leaves leaves on sticking out of it. Yeah, it's not it's as like it's seasoned sit there. and shit. I've been going so. on Facebook and finding the hot deals where they'll yeah, come. But you know and what stack I mean? Like, like it's perfect. Alaska's a wet place, so you don't always get like nice, dry, perfectly good seasoned yeah. wood. You can start your fire with that, then add on to it, and then you know the next morning your fire's out. You crack a yeah. piece of that Mormon wood no, going, it's, and, it's, and it's perfectly uniform to like put in the back of your four wheeler or your side oh, by that's side the other or thing. your boxes. It's just, just like boxes. you can set yeah. it up this way or this way, and you can stack stuff on top. It's not like an odd shape, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, it's they got it figured out. It's very unalaskan, but it's do you have to order so it? logical? No, they got it over there. They carry it. They carry it. Yeah. The, yeah it was up. like it was cheap too. It was even cheaper be. than like. You know the gas station. It's yeah, not the gas station is like bro. six bucks. It's like, like it's like ten dollars. Yeah, it's ten ninety nine now. now. I think it went down a little bit eight ninety nine because it's winter. Man. Now's the time to stock up. It's that COVID That's inflation, bro. That's yep. when I stock up. Off COVID inflation. So I've been burning that it's in the inflated. house because that's like clean. It doesn't pop. It lasts a long time. It's just like perfect. But then the guy came and did the cracks, and I got to wondering. Because in my old house that I sold, I had a gas fireplace, which just sucks. Like it doesn't. So I'm thinking like after bro. the earthquake or something happens and you're sitting there and you have no no heat in your house, you can't turn the gas on. Like you want a fireplace. And the guy's like, well, we sell these inserts where you can put the actual wood stove inside the traditional one. And it like makes it like 80% more efficient. Oh, like for heating your home? For hell heat, yeah. For heating your home. A fireplace barely heats your home. Oh, you're losing 90% escaping. of the heat out. Yeah. So they sell these things that's an insert. Of a wood stove. That's Of dope. a wood stove. I love wood stove. And it's like four to six grand. I mean, it's kind of expensive. Yeah. Um, but man, it's so beautiful. It looks so good. And you're going to actually use that heat because it has yeah. like the fan in the bottom and all that stuff that just like. Oh, And you wow. save a bunch of wood. 
you're not like blowing through all that stuff. Yeah, because you can you can burn less. Exactly. Yeah. No. Yeah. I love wood stoves, man. I always want a wood stove. Like the cabin I'm looking at, I has to have a wood stove. Um, but I've been oh, thinking yeah. in the house, man. Like shit goes down. You gotta have a yeah. you gotta have a way to heat heat the place. Like mm-hmm. you know, we yeah. had our we had our um, furnace go out a couple Christmases ago, and it's just like it is now, just minus six degrees. Yeah, uh, of course, it doesn't. Dude, it was the worst. Like I had the fireplace on, and I had to have like the garage heater on with the garage door open just to like not freeze the entire house out yeah. until someone just to come. save your pipes. Exactly. So is that like the insert there? It would like goes yeah it goes right in it goes right into your traditional fireplace and they got different styles and stuff like that it's like two thousand dollars but he's like that's the best way to go because he said eventually all those all that um whatever it is brick or whatever those those paneling inside cracks with all that heat and all that stuff yeah all the fire brick wasn't um, the ambiance nice too Oh, 100 percent. We have fires yeah. all the time in my house. I love it. I need to start doing it at my house. We have a fireplace, and we don't. Jamie's been hinting about it. Oh, dude, yeah, we do it at least like three, three times a week. I we know, have we fire all the time, especially now, right now. And another and reason for the wood. Another reason for the um that good Utah wood is <laughs> I would bring I would get wood from you know whoever and we brought it in the house, and a lot of that spruce stuff had like beetles. Mm-hmm. And if they're not dead, next thing you know, you got a bunch of spruce beetles all over your house, dude. We're like, what's going on Just here? Just eating it from the inside. So that's why we kind of went to the Dura Logs, and I was like, I don't feel Alaskan burning this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I want to get the good the other wood. Like blue flame. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you can't roast a marshmallow on that. Stern. No. You know, you, I mean, you can roast it, but I wouldn't feed it to anybody I know. No, it might taste kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. The... uh. The place that we bought out there at Nancy Lake, that property, that house is, you know, pretty, it's not going to be, we won't save it. it. It'll have to, that cabin that's on it will have to come down. But there is the biggest, dopest wood stove in that thing. Like, a huge like I'm like, that why stays. is there such a big wood stove in this tiny cabin? And I'm like, I can't wait to like build something around uh, this wood stove because it yeah. is so awesome. It is huge, dude. It's for me. It's like half this table. Oh, those are the Just best. A it's so huge on top. On top. You can Beautiful cook on top. Cast. Yeah, yeah. It's so awesome. I'm just like, probably this weighs is like worth it just for pounds. this. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. They ain't moving that thing. I'm dude. sure. <laughs> so you're gonna build around it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm infatuated with wood stoves. It's man. one of those. Oh, there, there's, l- there's lose a, a way to lose go. a friendship, moving it type weights. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, Guys like shortens his life by five years. And someone's gonna get a an smash L- toe L- and be L5 like, five gets <laughs> never coming here again. <laughs> Don't invite me. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's wrap it up with a couple questions real quick that I have for everyone. Um, 2023 personal goals. Damn. Uh, personal goal. One. I, was, I, can, I, I can start. I mean, mine is I, I want to get into better. Like resolution type thing? Yeah, just one. 2023. I really want to get m- more in shape for the hunting season. I always say nice. that. I always say I'm going to go do all these hikes. I don't. I'm not ready. Huffing and puffing. Like, that's my goal this year. It's getting worse, too. Like, not getting in shape. It's getting harder. It's harder. Yeah. It's definitely harder. I tell everyone, dude, it's easier to stay in shape than get in shape. Yeah. We got to get there first. <laughs> Man, I'll never forget that when you said that. I kind of want to bring up, take up swimming. It's super good for you. <laughs> because it's good But you got to get, you have to have some high, high impact, though, for your bones. Yeah. If you just swim or you just bike, you. you well, I'm playing hockey bones. still. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not. That wasn't really directed at you. I'm yeah. just saying, like, you got to have a high. They impact, still need so. to hike or rock or do something like that. Run something that's like high impact. Yeah. Lift weights, whatever. You you can't. Um, yeah, I think just for that cardio though, that swimming for me, I feel yeah. like oh yeah. for sure, make it happen. It's just so good for your body. Colder mm-hmm. water, the cold, the colder the water, um, the low impact, the movement. Like, I mean, Especially they re- they me. recommend like if you got like minor scoliosis. Like your your doctor will be like swim, just yeah. start swimming. Learn to swim laps. It'll fix scoliosis. Like yeah. it, it fixes so many back problems. It's so good for you. Yeah, it I is. Just it suck is, at it it is it. really good for you. Yeah, Sarah yeah. is like a prime example of that, right? 
Uh, well, I'm just saying, like, yeah, the weightlifting she does, having that, yeah, it's pretty amazing, and the relief and like the quality of life that she's experienced. Yeah, I don't, I don't know with it. like what that curvature in her spine. I don't, I forget what it's called. I don't know if that's like a painful thing, like if it. If it has a lot of pain to it, if it's like ruptured disc type stuff, or she mentions like discomfort, but or what? But, but the working out and strengthening the muscles around it like helps. I I mean, for me, like so many people will say, like I used to work out, I don't work out because of injuries, but like it's a hundred times worse when you don't. I know for me, like I've had back, I've had two back surgeries, like I've had a lot of injuries in my life and my back is way worse. If I, if I take a week, we go on vacation and I don't work out like my back is way worse. Yeah. It like I have, I have to work out to just to make for maintenance. Like I just have to. Yeah. And then, and then once you get a few weeks in, man, it just becomes a routine. Like I'm so proud of James Stevens. Like he is there every day in the morning at elite. Five days a week. I go three. He's there five. It's committed. He don't miss. Like, And he just, and and it was me just riding his ass in the beginning. I'd be like, I'd text him. I think we got this, like, strike 19. Every time i go there and he wasn't there, I'd be like, strike one. Mm. Strike two. Strike oh, three. he took that shit personal. He was like, right. yeah. yeah. As I was calling him out. And he was like, dude, keep calling me out, please. Like, don't stop. Because I was like, dude, we're going to reach a number and I'm just going to give up on you. And he's like, please don't. Like just keep calling me out because it is motivating. I'm like, yeah, shaming works. It always has. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for me. Yeah. People it just does. don't like it. They don't like to be shamed, but it works. It's yeah, a very it effective tool. It does. You got a goal? Yeah, that's a good one. Um. Yeah. Get something with my bow, man. There you go. Nice. That's a good one. Yeah. You know, you've been been getting after it with it. I mean, you you deserve it. 2023. It's the year. So God, year. it's difficult, man. I think it's time for you to like not take the switch back. to a gun. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it, man. You ain't gonna offend no, me. No, I, <laughs> you ain't I gonna just, offend me. Well, I guess I've gone hunting with you twice, and the intent was to get you an animal, and I took an animal, so it just worked out that way, not by design. It just happened. No, that way. But I, it's I think team sport, so it doesn't even bother it, me. It is, but I feel like, like you know, get the chance to go with you a couple more times, like. It will really, 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 really be the focus. <laughs> Actually, like, I'm going to take that back because I have an immediate goal in 2023, and that is I'm, I missed Winter Strong last year. I'm going this year. So my goal is I'm winning the run-shoot okay. lift competition. Like I'm winning it. Oh, shit. Okay. Bold statement. Yeah. And I'm then winning. killing <clears> – <throat> I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm going to, I know, I know enough people there now that when I'm, we're like selecting teams, like I, I can, I know enough people to like, I don't have to ask someone to pick for me because I don't know anyone. Yeah. You got your draft picks lined up? Like, yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. All right. B? I, uh, I have two, if I can say two. Sure. So I'm with you on the get in shape. I got a few extra pounds I've been carrying around for the last, like, year and a half, and it's wearing on my back, my hips, knees. I can feel it. That's mm -hmm. got to go. Definitely in preparation for um, physical activities in the, uh, this summer and hunting season. But uh, I, I want to start a, a personal uh, small business. There you I go. I got some plans and um, got the financing put together. My wife and I are – Putting something together and uh, don't want to say too much about it yet, but I'm hoping to... Mormon coal? <laughs> <laughs> wanna, it's so much more efficient cook, than the wood. <laughs> you want to cook some moose dogs on some coals, try these out. Straight out of Utah. Making not coal quite, great again. Not quite that. But uh, no, we got something in the works and hopefully it'll all come to fruition um, in the spring and like to start making some uh, steps toward kind of um, controlling my own destiny as far as, you know, not being uh, locked into just a full-time job all the time. Yeah. I, I, have, I have a lot of things to be grateful for 
and, and, and thankful for in a, you know, 20 year plus career doing what I've been doing. But I, uh, I feel like once you kind of hit the 40 mark, you, you kind of call it a midlife crisis. If you want, it's not that, it, but I've come to the realization. It's, it's prioritizing. Yeah. It, it's like, I've come to the realization that like, I'm never going to be 25 again. I'm never going to be 30 again. I'm never going to be that young man where you're like, oh, I got time. I got time. Yep. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I don't want to be 70 looking back on the past like a chump saying like, I wish I would have done that or I wish I would have tried that. Like there's yeah. some risks involved in starting a business and doing mm -hmm. some things. Obviously. There's risk involved in Every awesome thing you're ever going to do. Everything. And, and I feel like it's just like now or never. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I could wait another five years, then it'll then another five years, and then I'll be 50. And then there's another 10 years I lost. And it's like, you know, so I'm, I've definitely got like a plan, and I want to go about it responsibly, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to lose anything or, or put myself in a weird situation. So I'm going to go at this calculated. But yeah. at the same time, I don't want to just – sit on the sidelines thinking I want to do this. I want wow. to do this. I want to do this. I just want to take action on it. And so 2023 is a big year for, for that. Um, and you know, taking the next step with Alaska wild project Yeah, and, and our partners, man. And, and mm -hmm. you know, we've grown this thing from nothing and it's got wow. a lot of support and a lot of people that are behind us. And I think, uh, the future's bright, so yeah. Twenty three is a big year. I had a lot of like things that were said to me when I was a kid in like construction, just like smart ass comments, most of them. That like stuck with me over time and like it took me like twenty years before I understood them. One was <clears throat> this dude in Arizona, my boss in Arizona, John Bannis is his name. And he was like a Vietnam veteran guy from Texas. He was a super cool guy. And he would, every day, every single day, like when we'd be leaving the job site, he'd even call me if, like, he wasn't there. He'd be like, you learned something today? And I was like 20, 21, smart ass. Be like, nope. He's like, well, another day wasted. And he used to say that to me every single day. Mm. And, like, it never hit me for, like, four or five years. And I was like, man, he's, he like, he says that to me. And it's so right. Because I was just, like, joking. He was like, and, I, and I, I was like, I finally came to him, like, years later. Like, just called him. And I was like, I get it. I was like, he's like, yeah, it doesn't matter, like, how small it was. Yeah. But you wasted a day if you didn't learn anything. And another thing was that whenever you were, like, feeling like you know stressing out about work and stuff or like uh, you know whatever there was this dude and, and he was he was not the like he, he wasn't saying profound shit or motivating in any way but he used to always say well i was looking for a job when i found this one so <laughs> and that and that like that rings true like yeah. what do you have what do you really have to lose by taking a chance on entrepreneurship and i know like when i made that move like i looked at it like what how, how if you fail how far are you going to go back it's not like you you're like all of a sudden you're broke but you still have skills you still have talent yeah, you can go back, back and get a job that you have yeah like he said i was looking for a job when i found this one yeah so it's like that's all that's as far back as you can go is looking for a job yeah, and that's not that big so, of a deal. So, I mean, so many people are scared. of. That's why they don't do things is because they're scared of the failure. And it's like, you only fail if you quit, really. Yeah. Well, you fail if you don't even try to. 100%. Yeah, yeah, great point. If you don't even do it. Yeah. You still look back at it like, as a failure. Yeah. And yeah. it's worse. Yeah, because you it's didn't even worse, try. It's worse to regret something you didn't do versus <clears throat> regretting something. Oh, man, I tried this thing. It didn't work out. Kind of put myself in a hole, but I got a job again, and I got it figured out. Like, oh, bummer. You know, you don't re you, Oh, I don't, I don't, don't, I don't, I don't, regret I don't believe in regretting things you've done. But you'll regret the shit out of it when you're 75 years old looking back like, fuck, I wish I would have started that business that I wanted to try. Yeah. 
you because absolutely you, it's will. too late now absolutely you will. that'll eat you alive but yeah. i honestly don't believe in regretting things that you've done because yeah you win or you learn you should only regret things you haven't done yeah you yeah. win or you learn mm -hmm. like and i've done a lot of stuff that's probably regrettable <laughs> but yeah, i'm not gonna agree. regret it because i learned something from all of it yeah mm -hmm. good point and you know sometimes when you're you know sometimes you just gotta learn the hard way because you ain't that <laughs> <Yeah>. smart yeah <laughs> that's a great great question though yeah, yeah. uh two more on that on that lane um an event in 2023 that you're most looking forward to attending i think chad probably answered that one yeah i think you did with your strong with winter strong winter strong is there another uh, one? yeah that would that i mean that's like yeah i'm looking forward to that because that that deal with those people puts me way out of my comfort zone which i don't really get out of that a lot that's good yeah. especially not like if i get out of my comfort zone it's like it's a risk factor thing or it's the mountains or something like that it's not a social setting yeah well that's what that's where the question is leading like an event that's kind of a social setting and the last question you can answer it after that is mm. is um an adventure or some sort of adventure that you want to do this year like uh, i didn't do it i've been always meaning to do this or I missed that trip last year. I want to do it this year for sure. Um, so an event, I can go first. Um, mm. I'm really looking forward to the meet party, big mm. time. Yeah, I'm looking was, forward to that, getting all these too. people together that we don't normally see and having that. That's my main main. Uh, that's a event. hell of a recap when you get everybody back. Yeah. And then my adventure is um, that I really want to do. I really want to go on the Golcana with my family this year. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've yeah. gone with the boys. I've done that lots of times, but now I want to go show my kids and the wife that trip. Yeah, and you know the ropes now. Yeah, so that's one that I it's want to be on the books this year. Yeah. yeah so event. I mean, the meat party is that's a rad one. I, I think there's a there's a few events. Like, I think for me, um, the event. I, I guess it's not a specific event because nothing is like set in but uh i know that when we like did the family trip to 360 mm. that was a really good time for me because my i don't jamie doesn't get out with me on those things a lot yeah and mm. so the only way that she really likes to do it is when it's like that in a group setting where it's not just like her and a bunch of dudes or just her yeah like her and me she's fine with but if it's just like a bunch of dudes and she's like i'm the only girl I'm like yeah i guess so on this one yeah so like a couple of those trips this summer or one of those trips oh we're definitely doing the camp and then adventure is i'm making her go sheep hunting this year so that is gonna oh be, that's way cool that's gonna be big for me rewarding for me yeah i've really really been embracing and loving taking other people out yeah. i mean Mm -hmm. so i'm i'm Doing looking forward to that. like like if i could get her a sheep that would be probably the proudest sheep yeah. moment for me by far yeah mm. that's Definitely. great good that's answer. a good one man that's a really good answer no pressure yeah the, no it's fine <laughs> no the meat party was definitely something that i was excited about just because of the growth and the and the excitement that's building around it and the success we had last year and to follow up with that and and learning from that yeah you know like we kind of like learned a lot as far as venue and we've been been hit up, hit up dude like when is it we gotta reserve oh, yeah. it yeah my wife no. is asking like right i've already got well this and that plan. was the change too right we had it all it was all men before and then it was plus one which is it can be plus three it just you know but a plus one and that just changed the whole dynamic because now the wife or girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever can come let their hair down and have a good time, you know? And, I mean, uh, that, ev that event is like, like, I don't know if you guys know like how, like that event could easily become an SCI event, a uh, yeah. Rocky mountain. Like it could easily be like an event where like you guys are, don't even have to be the big sponsor like you could have a big sponsor to where you could get a big venue because like this industry is like it's kind of in a 
like i know the numbers say that like hunters numbers is going backwards but it doesn't really feel like that does it no it no, feels no. like the popularity it feels like of it doesn't people feel like more it. younger people are getting in yeah the popularity is growing but maybe the sheer numbers of like hunting licenses is less so that yeah maybe like i mean maybe but i feel like i feel like that is an event that can bring new hunters in and keep new hunter retain new hunters with that event because it's such a like positive event and it's showcasing like you know because i mean so many people just do chili or yeah burgers and like yeah they don't really think of game as like more than chili and burgers yeah. and hot dogs oh they can do un unbelievable culinary. and so when you have like, like somebody showing up with oh, beef wellington <laughs> beef <laughs> moose <laughs> wellington yeah. it's just like Oh, this can be fine dining. Yeah, yeah. It's a power. It's a powerful event, and you guys created it, and that's dope. Part of so it's I nice think keeping it, it private. It is to some degree. So that like the whole like banquet thing, it kind of seems daunting too to like plan and coordinate something like that. We oh, hundred percent. Old John Sturgeon, you know, but it's gonna that go route. that route. Like it's gonna be unavoidable. It feels like it could. It's gonna be unavoidable. Go for that you guys. direction. Um, you're going to have to share it with the world. Yeah. One of the, one of the, yeah, I think yeah, so. I, think yeah. So. I so mean, that thing could point. literally be a national event for some of these national companies. Yeah. I wonder, I think there might be some like liable liability type shit that you, you probably have to like navigate with like wild game versus like a banquet has like, you know, has a dinner. And so it's like specific stuff that's like, it's it's yeah. it's signed off I feel, on I feel what you're for saying, health, like, health yeah. reasons and whatnot. So I don't know if like because the meat is not re not regulated. You know, we're gonna have to have like. The, but you're not selling it, no. right? That's the thing. You know, so so I don't know if you gotta sign a waiver to come in and. Yeah. It, well, we'll, well cross I mean, that people, bridge when we get there. I mean, though. there's yeah, corporations exactly. and stuff that do potlucks, right? So that's yeah. what you would Very call true. it. Very true. Very true. That's what there, there has to, there's that is there's always is. you stay in the gray, bro. Yeah. Stay in the gray. Stay in the gray. Yeah, the gray. You gotta live in the gray. <laughs> yeah, a couple of things. So the meat party's huge. Um the Winter King Derby, I'm stoked about that again oh, this I year. Oh god about that. Like That's last year was fun, but now we all kind of know like we're all gonna be there and how it all roll how it all goes. Like yeah. maybe we won't do like how I did it last year. I got like my own private house. Which yeah. was nice, but it was also kind of like quiet. Yeah. Like maybe just all get the freaking beachfront. Lands in. Lands in shit, like locked. So we're all together. Yeah. yeah. Then we all be in one spot, walk yeah. to stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, I think, would make it elevate the fun and chaotic, degenerate. Man, stew in the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's one. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to getting my family back up to Paxson Lake mm. for Father's Day. Um, nice. You know, we, we took a small group last year, Eric and his family, you know, he called it this year. He's like, Father's Day, that's what we're doing. And I was like, hell yes. Nice. Because it's quiet, it's fun, and and uh, that's something I'm looking forward to. 360 with the families, yeah. Boots Boots, yep. and Lisa want to come. Like, I think that's going to expand. That's going to get bigger, too. But luckily, yeah. 360's got plenty of space. Plenty of, <laughs> plenty of space. Absolutely. Um, but uh, Adventure... Boy, that's a really, really good one, man. An adventure. Um, I mean, it's hard to nail. Put I, one I, I tell on you what, I these. yeah, I tell you what, I am really looking forward to is the uh, the Hall Road Caribou Hunt. Yeah, that that's like whatever that means and whatever it becomes. I want to go up over Attigan and I want to go down onto the yeah, slope and I want to see all that Me and neither. like, yeah. even if it doesn't mean like. We even see a caribou just to do the trip, to go through the process. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm going to be ready, both certified. Like, I, I would love yeah. the opportunity to try and take a caribou. Yeah. All of it. It's just, for me, it's, here in Alaska, we do a lot of the same things every year. You know, sure. we go to the Kenai, and we go to the Russian, and then we go to 360, and then take my jet boat up the Deshka. And, like, these are all fun, amazing, great adventures that i love doing over and over and over but what's so exciting is when you plan to do something you've yeah. never done before yeah. a place you've never seen before yeah so that is really really exciting to me and i'm looking forward to that right so, on yeah me too. great questions dude 
Like, That's fun, man. 23 is uh, going to be a fucking blast. It is. It Ooh. is. Um, yeah, you're going to have to re-ask those three questions like <laughs> after the draw results. Come yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything can change drastically. New adventure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of want to end it on a trivia. I got two trivia questions. Um, the first one is what were the two most downloaded AWP shows in 2022? Oh, 20. Oh, that, I would, I would have no clue on that. Downloaded what? I just like, looked at the analytics. How did people download weeks ago? Like YouTube, YouTube, YouTube's a set. YouTube's the other question. What was the most watched YouTube video? Oh, so downloaded ours? on podcast platforms. Yep. Like the Man, most listened have. to show. I just saw there, the analytics like a couple weeks ago, but I, I was looking at like from the very first download to now. And I wasn't looking specific at 22, so. And you had some good ones. I'm trying to think of what I would think would be. The most downloaded? I would hope that the John Sturgeon one was up there. It is, but it isn't the top two. It's pretty cranked up. Uh, I think that a Fognac one was up there. That's number two. <sighs> the Fognac one? Yeah. yeah. That's number two. My buddy's yeah. kid just listened to that. He was well, that was my guess. In so. Oregon. That's number two. What do you think number one was? And there's only like five downloads between one and two. Oh, really? Yeah. Um. Oh. Uh, um, uh, the, the Summer Roundup? Nope. Damn. What was Summer Roundup? We were just like talking about summer plans. Oh. It was like back in like May, April, I think. Man, those are my guesses, man. Okay, you have a guess? One more guess? No, because I can't. I can't think of a like. I can't think of a a super good one that was like. I would figure it would be something that was like very informational, like maybe the. Um, I forget her name, but you, she was like avalanche forecaster maybe or backcountry. I don't know. I figure it would be something that a lot, something that has to do with what a lot of people in Alaska do. Mm. Yeah. Close. A fog neck I can see because it's just interesting and people, and elk is not like the main species that people hunt here. So I can, I can totally see why people would be like, what? Elk yeah. hunting on a fog neck. There's probably a lot of people who didn't even know there was elk there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So wow. I could see that being an interest. Well, and it's just such an adventurous outside like, of that. Spot. I can't. I can't think of someone that you've had on here that would. The number one was Luke Mel. Oh, the backpackers or the um, packrafters guide. Oh uh, yeah. He was very informative. That's a yeah, very. Yeah, because he um, was all about the Nordic skiing. Nordic skating. Nordic skating. Uh, Nordic skating. Excuse me. And he's done some crazy long adventures. This hikes dude is and an backpacks. Adventurer. Yeah, like really. That one was the most downloaded in twenty two. Mm -hmm. Luke Mel. Yep. Well, he's yeah. wrote books and stuff, and like he's done some crazy shit. Oh, he's yeah. like a true international adventurer. Yeah. He Congratulations, goes Luke. You would, I would have thought maybe that I did or I'd one too. Hey, man, you were number two though, bro. Sure. Within five. Within five. Wow. Yeah. That's well, awesome. A, a fog neck. I don't know if it's me. <laughs> well, you told the story. Yeah. 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 So. And then what about YouTube? Which is a whole different thing. Like, you know, I heard one of the comedians say, like, comedians that stay in one city and never travel, like, and go to different rooms, um, they never get to, kind of like you said, Bert, like, doesn't know what the people are like in these places. Um, and I feel like the same thing goes with social media. Like, our stuff on Facebook is reaching a different audience than our stuff on Instagram and our stuff on Spotify is a different group than the mm -hmm. people yeah. on Apple, than the people on YouTube. Yep. It's all like different lanes. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Same show, same information, but it's reaching different audiences. Like yeah. Because people groups. don't really do all of them. Yeah. Like yeah, there's no. YouTube people. Yep. yep. And there's Facebook people. Spotify cause like, people. Cause like I'm on Instagram a little but I'm not on Facebook at all. Yeah. I'm not on, like I use YouTube as a tool. Like I don't follow yeah. channels on it. Yeah. I don't think. I don't even know if I have an account to do That's that. a really t tough question. I, I feel like, 
I'm I'm thinking maybe it's like the the one we did on boots. Oh, that's a good guess. Because we like were a like, gear review we were, one we with the like boots. A, yeah, gear review, a gear review on boots. Yeah, you would think because we that like had them like on the table and we were like putting or them maybe in front of the uh, camera. um uh, what's her name? It's food stuff. Uh, I'm not forgetting her name now. Julia. No, the um, backpacker food. Oh, Heather. He- Heather's choice. We movie. haven't had Heather was one of the first guests ever. She was 2021. Oh, so she wasn't. In oh, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. our 21. I forget, man. We need to have Heather back on. 100 goddamn episodes. That's two years. Yeah, I know. It flew by. We, cause we started recording in 20. It's crazy. But we didn't no, it was 2021 in February, and we released it in March, the first episode. But we started messing around. Yeah, we didn't like put anything out, though. We had the equipment and stuff, though, didn't we? I don't know. Maybe it not. Was all maybe it was like right, right at the very, very the end of 2020. Yeah, and we started in twenty. We got our we got our studio like in January of twenty one. Is it some sort of a gear review? Backpacks? Nope. Oh shit! Damn. Um. It's, then it's a chick. Yep. <laughs> it is for sure. <laughs> uh, if it ain't a gear review, it's a girl. <laughs> the girls, all the girls ones get the most views for uh, sure. Okay, is it um is it uh um? So which one had the most girls on? <laughs> is it the Sword and Summit? Uh, nope, but they were close. Damn. Uh, is it the Toyota? The truck? No. Nope. nope. She was up there too, though. All the girls' ones are the most. Oh, That's I'm funny. sure, because they want to see. Yeah. Hopefully yes. it's Emily then. She can get two awards in one week. You nailed it. Yeah. Emily's. Emily's. Look mm. it. Emily T. Time bomb. Yeah. Damn. And that one was just... Uh, Not that long ago. Five episodes ago? hmm Damn. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, you, you know, know you need just, to get on she here. Just, like, she just like... Everything she does, everybody wants to see what's up. Emily's friend, uh, he goes by, what's his thing? Wiley. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wiley Brew or Wiley. Dude. He was just here. Yeah, he just got a beautiful lion. You got to get him on here just yeah. to talk about hunting lions with hounds. Yeah. And he's a guy. Yeah, so we need to get him on. Right. He, he, he can yeah. cover a lot of stuff. But he lives Wyoming. In Wyoming, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I've been messaging with him. Um, we we got to get him on when he comes up. He's a cool sure. dude. Yeah, well, we met him on the... We went to watch the World Cup. He's cool, dude. Oh, he yeah. came. He came. Yeah, he to came. The he came, he came with Emily, and then he actually came skating. skating yeah, I met. I met him also. over at Billy Crumb's house, and oh, bum them. Is, isn't Crumb coming in? Next day was horrible. <laughs> oh, it was one of those nights. Oh, no. Oh no. What were you guys drinking? Started with wine, and then Uh-oh. Crumb was like, "I got a little bit of whiskey, but it's kind of shitty. You know, I don't have any like nice whiskey, like what Canadian Hunter type to. shitty." I was like, Crown Royal is great whiskey. What are you talking about? And then we emptied that. Ooh, that's Heartburn City for just me. Just had the purple bag? Just <laughs> no, it was the big bottle. Oh, oh. shit, that doesn't come in the Handle. bag. Handle. <laughs> no. no. I've got a little whiskey? Yeah. I was thinking he had like a splash of the bottle. Uh, the girls were the only ones texting the next day. <laughs> like, what's happening at your house? <laughs> well, he hasn't moved yet. Yeah, he's on the couch. I think Kat <laughs> Cat was like, well, Billy got up. But then he's back in bed. <laughs> it's like you get 10 feet away from like, him, I can smell it. I got out of bed at four. I was like, beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't recover the same, dude. I'm done. Oh, the next those day. hangers are fucked. Wh- whiskey oh, whiskey no. destroys me. I can't nowadays. even drink whiskey no more. No. <laughs> yeah. um, we are looking for a video editor. If you got the skills or you know someone that has the skills, we don't have a lot of money to pay you. Um, but we do have a lot of things that we want to film in 2023, and we need someone that can turn around some um, films for us, some short edits, some long edits. Um, not the podcast show, but other adventures that we're doing. Um, so the cool thing is you may be coming with us on all this cool stuff you are. If you got a camera and you want to come film. Well, we got cameras. We got cameras, but if you got the editing skills, we don't got the time to sit around and edit. That just takes hours and hours. Um, so if you know somebody or if you're that person, hit us up, shoot us an email, uh, maybe send us a little demo or something like that. We are looking for someone to help us out to bring on board on the team to help out with the video editing. Good call, man. Yeah, because I think one of the reluctancies, is that a word? Yep. Mm-hmm. On filming and and documenting the content, it's like, oh, yeah, I capture all this stuff. And it's like, well, who's going to f- go through it's it? It's 100% why I don't film anything. 
Yep. Yeah, like I, I because I, it will just be footage that I will never. It'll look just at sit again. on a drive and never get looked at or used. No. Yep. You know that that that's a that's a huge. Yeah, so we got a lot of trips. We got a lot of plans. We got a lot of hunts um, coming in 2023 between our entire squad. Um, but we need an editor on our team. So if you're that person, if you're that guy, if you're that girl, um, let us know, and uh, we want to bring you in on, on the team and to help us out, and so that we can put out some of these videos. Um, shoot, we probably got 10 we could put out now with just the footage from old stuff. Um, but uh, let us know. Hit us up, Alaska Wild Project at Gmail um, or on Instagram or Facebook and let us know. Uh, thank you to all the Patreon members that are signing up and jumping on board. Thank you to all the people that have subscribed to the YouTube channel. Uh, thank you to all the listeners. Thank you to people that have been going to Barney's and buying stuff for Christmas, even though that was gone. Uh, we still got a bunch of stuff on our website. Uh, go ahead and check that out. We got new merch coming. Just shipped. Yep. Yep. We got a couple new hoodies. Old, the original colors. We got the green and gold, blue and gold. Yep. We got those coming. black beanies. We got the, the mugs. just showed up. Uh, lots of merch. All that stuff kind of helps us out a little bit to pay the bills around here. So we appreciate you guys' support. Thank you to the sponsors. Yes, hundred percent. Thank you to the sponsors. The sponsors, man. Yep. We couldn't do it without you guys. Yep. Thank um, you, Chad, for coming in. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime, man. Man, always Enjoy fun to have you coming in, man. Become a staple around these parts. Yeah, I love talking shit. <laughs> You're good at it. <laughs> yeah, really good at that it. That was literally a class at Mountain View Elementary. I think <laughs> I can't remember. It's a long time ago. Yeah, it's called I'm pretty recess. sure we had it. That's what it was called. <laughs> yep. Recess. That's what. It That's was. what it's Talked called. Talked a lot of shit at recess. <laughs> I got so many your mama jokes. <laughs> Spent a lot of time on that wall. Spent a lot of time on that wall. <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks, Alaska. We'll see you at Upper Huffman, and always remember, stay wild. <laughs> you remember my speaking to you of what I call your overcautiousness. Are you not overcautious when you assume that you cannot do what the enemy is constantly doing? The Alaska Wild Project podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. Barney's Sports Chalet, supplying hunters with the best hand-selected gear since 1963. The exclusive home of Frontier Gear, built for the rugged Alaskan terrain. Your one-stop shop for all your outdoor needs. Visit Barney's today at 906 West Northern Lights. Arbor Digital, the forefront of digital assets, cryptocurrencies, and wealth management. Providing a low-cost, research-based investment strategy for Alaskans looking to invest their hard-earned money. Visit arborcapital.io today to put your money to work. Tailored Restoration 24-Hour Emergency Home Services. Helping Alaskans restore their dreams since 1972. Services include fire, water, mold, post-emergency cleaning, repair, and remodeling. Give them a call in Anchorage, Eagle River, Matsu, or Fairbanks. Hit them up at tailoredrestorationalaska.com. Total Truck and Alaska Overlander, Alaska's premier supplier for custom automotive accessories and overlanding products. Providing all-inclusive rental vehicles and trailers, custom outfitted to explore the Alaskan backcountry with a unique and convenient traveling experience. Serrano's Mexican Grill, two locations, one on Tudor, one on Northern Lights. The Northern Lights location has their new tequila bar. Check it out. Also see their daily specials at serranosmexicangrill.com. The TreehouseAK.com, located at 341 Boniface Parkway, Alaska's own and grown cannabis and CBD store. Ask the bud tender what the strain of the day is to get your 10% off. The Treehouse, where the culture lives. The Connoisseur Lounge, Alaska's premier locally owned and operated cannabis retailer, located in the heart of Palmer, Alaska. Their cultivated products include Snowcap Romance, Aurora Haze, Super Glue, and much more. Find them at theconnoisseurlounge.net. AKO Farms, located in Sitka, Alaska. Built from the ground up with concentrates as their single motivation. With exclusive products such as their sugar wax, full spectrum diamond sauce cards, and more. Ask your local bud tender about AKO. Marijuana has intoxicating effects that may be happy forming and addictive. Marijuana impairs concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence. There are health risks associated with consumption of marijuana. For the use of only by adults 21 and older. Keep out of the reach of children and marijuana should not be used by women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. The Bait Shack. Located on Ship Creek upstream of the bridge. Can't miss the bright red shack. They are the go-to fishing gear rental and guide service on Ship Creek. 
tight lines, and fish on. Come hook into the action with them. Hit them up at thebaitshackak.com. Snow Pro AK, your snow and ice management company specializing in business and residential properties. They know what it takes to keep your property presentable and safe. Give them a call for a free estimate at 280-7098 or visit lawnproak.com. Double Shovel Cider Company, located off of Arctic and 58th, handcrafted Alaskan-made colonial ciders. They also have a tap room downtown on the corner of 5th and E. Stop by today and taste an award-winning cider. Should you not claim to be at least his equal in prowess and act upon the claim? I say try. If we never try, we shall never succeed. This proposition is a simple truth, and it's too important to be lost sight of for a moment. If we cannot beat the enemy where he now is, we never can. It is all easy if our troops march as well as the enemy, and it is unmanly to say they cannot do it.